and we're live, it looks like. Let's hope people start watching the, the VOD or the stream. One of those. Somebody will start watching, I'm sure. Um, how do you get these Jurassic Park Operation Genesis dinosaurs? And can I have one? I can give you some. Can I give myself any? Uh, unless you save them. Unless you no. save them earlier than no. Can't, don't take mine or okay. I will I'm sorry. commit a crime. <laughs> no, mine, hey, I... Swamp Ape, we just started. We're the ones who are late. We were waiting for you. <laughs> <laughs> I need to open up on YouTube so I can look at the chat. Mm -hmm. Indeed. Hey, everybody. Hey, guys. I know we're seven minutes late. We had some tech difficulties. Hello. Apologies. Uh, yeah. So just for those of you who are here early, um, a, just a little point here. If you're going to be very kind to us and give us any sort of tip or donation or super chat during the stream, thank you very much. Um, we have a QR code on the screen. Um, just because of the way things work, YouTube takes like 30% of Super Chats from us. And we figure if you want a Super Chat, that's fine. If, but if you have choices and you want to give something, um, you might as well use the QR code. It'll go right to our PayPal and we'll just get more of it, which I think is kind of a win-win for everyone. Uh, so I am a scoundrel, Nathan. Uh, well, Nathan... In fairness, you took me to see Dune 2. I was not <laughs> going to not break into your apartment and start screaming about worms and herbs and spices. Um, <laughs> I like I like the lore around me that's developing in our comments section here. It's very fun. Um, anyway, we're the Skeleton Crew, and we're not going to uh, beg for money, so that's the only time I'll talk about the PayPal link, but it's the QR code at the bottom left of the screen there. Um Thank you in advance to anybody who uh, is able to super chat or tip or all of that. It means a lot to us. And uh, welcome to this stream. N there is no yeah, new research all. that's out. There is no event. We are just friends. Um, and we're hanging out and uh, having fun playing another game of Holotype. No, we're not. We're like we're like the Mythbusters, where we're just friends on screen <laughs> and we just secretly hate each other. Yeah. Um, but uh, James, my dear on-screen friend, you asked for a dinosaur. Um, I did. Uh, let's see. The options I have are Albertosaurus, which I think you're probably just going to go with. Yeah, probably. Ankylos Ankylosaurus, Brachiosaurus, Camarasaurus, Carcharodontosaurus, Ceratosaurus, Dilp, Myasaura, Aronosaurus, Pachycephalosaurus, um, Spino, Stego, Trike, T-Rex, and Raptor. Let's go with Albertosaurus. It'll be fun. Uh, Albertosaurus. I, like I also you've... have Godzilla. <laughs> well, let's no. see Godzilla. Oh, of course. Yeah. I almost broke character and bought a Godzilla thing yesterday. Oh, what was God. it? Well, so because we went to the re-release of Spider-Man. Mm -hmm. um, that's and pretty in cool. the movie theater. It was very fun. Whoa. Um, Do you see this? That's awesome. <laughs> How's it doing? Oh, he's, he's shooting lasers. Oh, he walks. Anyways, so, um, they had go. for sale by the concessions these like coffee mugs that were like like the old school Godzilla, like the the guy in the suit they looked like. I don't know. It was it was like him, but he was a little coffee mug. It was extremely cute. That's cool. But I had self control. I was there for my five dollar re release of a twenty dollar of a twenty year old movie. <laughs> I saw that they had um. Amelia, I think it was with you when I saw the they announced that you could buy a ticket to see all of them. I think so. I mean, I've the only ones that I don't believe I saw were the original ones because the others I was old enough to see them in theaters, and my parents weren't worried about me being traumatized. Oh no! When I said all of them, I mean like in a day. Yeah, no, I don't want to do that. Back to back. I don't want to do that. I can do that at home. <laughs> So I chose, I only did the first one. I thought about doing the second one too, because that one also is very good. Second one's so good. It's so I know, but I was like, the power if of I the had sun, to pick the one. Palm of my hand. If I had to pick one, I'd pick the second one, honestly. I, I just have, I mean, I've, I've seen the first one more. And I was telling, I was telling Jacob in the theater with the, um, the Roosevelt Island scene. Uh, mm. The first time my family visited New York, we went to the tram specifically because of that movie. And my, mm. it was like 830 at night. 
and there were people on it just trying to go home because for, for those of you not from New York, that Roosevelt Island is you, there's just apartments there. There's basically nothing else. There's a single gelato shop, which is where we went. Um, but there's people Very on this dirty. tram just trying to go home. And my brother and my dad recited the goblins like entire speech from that part of the movie to each other. That's wonderful. Uh, <laughs> anyway, hey, thank so you. Had- I'm <laughs> seeing one seven, oh, thank zero one seven two. <laughs> Uh, Dr. James G. Napoli broke into my house on April 4th, 2022 and stole all of my house's door hinges. Love the content, by the way. I listened to it while playing Prehistoric Kingdom. Thank you so much. Uh, Yes. That's also great to hear because I think we, uh, consciously or not, emulated a lot of what we do on this channel on uh, the kinds of YouTube channels I listen to while I play single-player computer games. Oh, yeah. And so I'm glad (laughs) it worked. Um, It's mostly Red Letter Media. Yeah, and thank you guys for counting the gray hairs in my beard. There are more every day. Um, <laughs> you see, the thing is, when I start, when I grew up my beard for the first time, I noticed there's, you probably can't really see them on camera, and I'm not going to, like, lean in and do the thing. Um, but I have, like, a bunch of red hairs in the just the chin of the beard. Uh, yeah, no, this is the thing. So the genetics for the top, like, the hair on your head and the hair in your facial hair are actually different. So you can have different colors of beard and um, and normal head hair. And I have some I have some ancestors and relatives who have red hair, so it kind of makes sense that I'd have genes for that kicking around in there somewhere. No, that's fair. My beard is redder than my head hair. Like, it, right. uh, if my hair gets a lot of sun, it becomes very blonde, and I still have a pretty red beard. Yeah, so I, I like the red beard hairs, and I think I just have this feeling that they're the ones that are going to go gray. Just I'll lose them all, and nobody will ever believe it. Wander, another another red beard king uh, with brown Indeed. hair. Indeed, yes, but you you are Scottish, so it is uh, perhaps more more uh, predictable. I'm not Scottish. Yeah. I'm just Scott. You're just, he, this is and that's just Scott. Um, I'm also, just Scott. You'll notice that uh, Alex is not here. Um, <laughs> Alex is having fun somewhere. <laughs> it very, it's very out of character for him. Yeah, he he's outside enjoying himself both of those things are out of character for him <laughs> yeah should we play holotype we should we play should. holotype okay um dalton do you want to give us a rundown of the uh, as i accidentally wrote on all of our social media posts homebrew rules oh, instead of house yes. rules because so, i was tired we've played we've played holotype for a while um i love the game it's a great base game um but for for this stream because we don't have a new species that we're celebrating. We're not celebrating a new holotype being named. I figured we could do something to kind of spice it up a little bit. Um, and so made some house rules that are inspired a bit by a post that uh, Brexwork, the company who made holotype, shared of another game designer talking about the holotype. They enjoyed it and they were like, here are some things I'm thinking of trying. And I was like, I want to try those too. Very shamelessly. Um, so the first thing we're doing is I've uh, I put a troll here on the map. Uh, this is in the in the publishing journal, and this is to remind us to pay the troll toll. Okay, so uh, normally when you when you publish, if you publish a global objective, it either costs zero uh, research if you have all of the cards you need to fulfill it, or it costs five white cubes if you're citing other people. Normally, those five white cubes just go back to the supply. Now, you'll still pay five, but First, you will pay a white cube to every player that you're citing, and then the remainder of those cubes will go to the supply. So that incentivizes, um, that gives some reward to the people that you cite. Uh, And then the second thing that we're doing are these four note cards over here on the the side of the table. Um, If everyone would please select one of those just at random. Um, I've created four rolls. So, and and now instead of just being um, a color, we also are each representing a different kind of institution. Um, I've, I've tried my best to keep these so that they won't destroy the balance of the game. Um, and that each one has a bit of a, a drawback and a bonus. One of them actually might, kind of doesn't have a drawback, but it was, the, the, it was what I could think of. Um, Did you I'm not take elite institution where you just get more of everything for no reason? I did not. I did not do that. <laughs> so, um, these are as follows. We'll cycle through, and I'm just going to start uh, with, with James, and then I'll go because uh, he's the one whose POV we have, 
and then we'll proceed to the left. So James has drawn a small institution. So James is kind of uh, role-playing, if you will, a, a, an institution with smaller physical space. And what that means is that his it, like base fossil storage pool is reduced to six. And that's to kind of represent a, a place that is like not tremendously big. They they don't have as much space to store fossils. They have to be more strategic with where they are going to do field work. Now to represent that, um, these the marbles were a bad idea, but I will put something there. Uh, to represent being more strategic with field work, um, the the bonus that comes with this is that every time you draw a field expedition card, you will draw at least one more than it says you will, and then you will pick from those where you want to go. So James, even if you send your field assistant, you will you will draw two and pick one. And if you send someone mm -hmm. higher than field assistant, you'll draw three and pick one. So you can pursue your specimens more strategically because you have less space to store them. Um, so that is the uh, trade-off. Yeah, that's the trade-off, essentially. Um, I will leave these for you to, to scale down how do you, and block how do you off scale two of those. Down in this uh, right, right click, scale, and then there's a an option. So Amelia, you have drawn. You can also, just hit minus. Oh, you have drawn museum renovation. So this means that your museum will be undergoing a renovation. You don't have any major changes to the gameplay, um, but at 15, after 15 holotypes, when the uh, museum collection has been refreshed three times, you will then draw three more personal objective cards and choose one of those to continue to pursue for the rest of the game. That's the one that doesn't really have a drawback, and I couldn't think of one. If anyone else wants to think of something um, to balance that a little bit more, feel free. But otherwise, That's one that has no drawback? It, not really. I mean, maybe it's that... Maybe she doesn't... Okay, there are two ideas. Either you don't choose which one it is, or you, like, have to change. Or, or like, you only draw one, and then that's, like, your new thing. Maybe that's it, yeah. You draw one, and that's... I think that's more fair. Yeah, so... Right. So... You I will have draw... To ch change objectives halfway through. You don't have to change. You get a new one, but you don't... I'm going to modify it so you don't get to um, pick what it is. Okay. Right. Alternatively, we could ask Chat to choose which one she has to work towards. Ooh. <laughs> they, which is funny because they'll only know my, uh, they'll only know my hand. So yeah. So you, yours is it's like a, a boom bust thing. Like you could get something that's easier, easy to work for, or synergizes with what you have, or it might not help you at all. There you go. There's a drawback. Okay. Scott uh, has drawn the final. Oh, no, sorry, I haven't discussed mine yet. But Scott has drawn no students. Studentless. So, uh, Scott is, is role-playing as an institution that does not take graduate students. Um, instead, uh, Scott's graduate student will be replaced by a second technician, uh, a second field assistant. Now, that will still be unlocked in the same manner as the normal graduate student. Um, and, and it and it will bump things at the field assistant level. So it doesn't get to bump things as if it's a graduate student. So you lose the graduate student, which is your drawback. But what you gain is that your all of your field assistants, both the first one you get and the one you unlock, operate every space as if they were a graduate student, except for the publishing journal. I like that one. Me too. It, it's fun. It's, um, it's appropriate for me being <laughs> yeah. staff centric. Yes. And the reason, so I had prior dealt out all of the cards uh, and then I took them back because I realized that this last one I need to do beforehand. Um, why I isn't the, there a dancing storm trooper? Mission? I don't know why there isn't. I enjoy the dancing storm. I, I, I gave him to you. I gifted him to you. Um, Can I appreciate you that. Thank you. Stop moving or do they just do that? They just do that. Okay. I would, how do I make Godzilla breathe atomic breath again? Uh, so if you if you right click on it and you see trigger effect, uh, if you hit number two on there, that's cool. There you go. Um, the My last cat at three a.m. <laughs> <laughs> Doctor Doctor Dino Hume has just got an expedition to prove my hey. uni's teaching collection greenlit. That's awesome! That's Congratulations! Fantastic. Very cool. That's great um, news. 
That is. Teaching collections are so important too. Like, yes. They're they're great. So congratulations. So uh, the last one is Museum of the Blank. And with this, I have to choose a time period. I'm, I'm representing a museum. There are lots of these local museums around the country and around the world, I presume, but at least around America, certainly, that are very local. And they have a dense collection of a particular, like, uh, formation. So, for example, um, the Morrison Museum has a lot of Morrison collection. And it doesn't have a tremendous amount of other things. It's got other cool things. But, you know, it's... It's a local thing. So I'm playing as one of those types of institutions. At the beginning of the game, before looking at objectives or specimens that I get, I pick a time period. And then for the rest of the game, all types in that period cost one less fossil to publish because I'm replete with that formation. Um, I'm going to pick... Um... While you pick, Dalton, uh, Specimen Zach says Albertosaurus Scream SFX.mp3. And Ooh. I agree. Yes. I'm going to go Museum of the Cretaceous. So Cret Cretaceous holotypes will cost one less fossil cube to publish. Real royal tyrol hours. Yeah, seriously. Yeah. That's such an amazing collection. It's, it's incredible. I need to go there at some point. Oh it, my it, God. it is just like... No. I I... I felt like the character at the end of like some cosmic horror just I, I felt like my brain could not tolerate the amount of information that was pouring into <laughs> it. There were too many fossils, too much data. It's hard it's hard for one one brain. All right, so now we select one of the one of the two personal objectives that we want to go for and put the other one in the discard pile. I will start there, and I will try my best not to look at uh, what James has selected and has, as I wish not to cheat. Thank you. Oh, you know, I, I've forgotten, in every game of Holotype we've played all together, I'm at such a massive disadvantage, because all <laughs> of you are looking at my hands constantly. I'm not Dinos looking I know. Here. I Dinosaurs know. and more yeah. says holotype needs to add Hesperonis. That would be very cool. I would love to see that. Um, Hesperonis fans in chat. And it is a theropod, so they could put it in under that theropod heading, although that would kind of be a little bit... They could, yeah. Um, Jurassic Canon King asks, how can you get this game? It seems so fun. So this is the, de like the demo version available on Tabletop Simulator through Steam. Um, but the holotype board game itself, to get a physical copy... Hey, Alex. Um, hey, Alex. Yeah. You can... <laughs> uh, you can... If you Google holotype board game, you can find it. Otherwise, you can go to brexworksgames.com uh, and purchase it from their website. Um, and they have, the, they have the base game as well as the Pterosaur mini expansion. And they have kickstarted a European expansion as well as a Kurotarsi, so a Crocodilian mini expansion that we're, both, we're all very excited for. Yeah. Um, Endless Ocean uh, has asked if we created this game. Uh, we did not. No. But we like we it. We just like it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um. How do I discard the one that I don't want? Uh, just Put drag it, it into this pile, yeah. Okay. All right, now we roll to see who goes first, and then we James can remembered how to do the tab bang. Oh, yeah, I finally remembered. Um, uh, <laughs> we got a question from uh, from somebody here who I, I see it is a repost, um, asking if we're going to cover Tyrannosaurus macrayensis in the eventual T-Rex video. Um, the T-Rex video will probably cover the entire body of knowledge on Tyrannosaurs in general. Uh, we're expecting it to be our first 12-hour video, so I'm sure... Wouldn't we'll be surprised. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I really do enjoy having Alex in comments. Yes, yeah, pretty good. It's fun. Uh, James, would you roll the, the purple oh, die, please? Oh, yes, of course. Jesus. <laughs> it was a bad roll. I had a 19, FYI. Oh, okay. Amelia, it's your turn. Again. <laughs> you can I'm you can decide to roll it that. not in the bowl. <laughs> not what? James threw it directly in the bowl of research stuff. Oh, I won't do that. Of course you won't. Sixteen for me. Was that a roll? Okay. Yeah, because yeah, you can hit I, R. I don't. Yeah, I don't know how to. Whenever I throw it, it doesn't work. So. Yeah, an okay. eight. So I will go first. 
and then we will proceed to the left. Yes, yeah, Spinosaurus right. is going to be a 24 hour hell video. I've got the turn rat. It's going to be as long as the the new um, video the from a bit. Yeah. Quentin reviews on the Beverly Hillbillies. Yeah. This, <laughs> this 40 hours. I'm going uh, to. If only it's that short. <laughs> I'm going to go to the field. I'll send my field assistant. And I'm going to the Nugget Sandstone. So I get Thank a you, trace Alex. fossil. All shuffled. Um. Apache oh, yeah, 2895 uh, has uh, congratulated Scott on getting engaged. Thank you very much. <laughs> engaged to Amelia's fiance. Yes. <laughs> yes, we're very One happy thing. for some combination of these two. I'm too confused One to know. <laughs> we all had a great time at the zoo. We Correct. did have a good time at the zoo. Although I'm very sad that the, the critters didn't freak out with the eclipse. Oh, interesting. No, well, the squam were acting up. They weren't hmm. freaking out, but they were acting goofy. They were like, acting goofy. There was, yeah, there was that whole thing in that one desert enclosure where they were they were having was, a time. Well, it was just one guy was mad, and he was making Big it mad. everyone else's problem. <laughs> <laughs> um, oh, I have the turn rat. Yes, it's your turn. Okay, well then my Somebody... field assistant is going on a field expedition. So the I horse. Draw. That was sorry to interrupt. I was trying to remember. The so wanderers asked us, um, of what's left on the wheel, what animal are the crew dreading the most? The last Asian stegosaurus, spinosaurus, or something else? The, the last Asian stegosaurus, if I'm being hundred percent honest. Oh, Everything I else I, yeah. I you know what? Let me look at the wheel. I'm going to the Kirtland formation, by the way. Okay. Very cool. That was a terrible roll, but that's fine. Alright, that's Three fossils and a trace fossil, if I'm interpreting that correct. Turn right to Amelia. All right, so I gotta go. I gotta go to the field to get the cubes, right? Yes. Okay. Yeah, it's a hundred percent. It's it's just Chunkingosaurus that I'm actually dreading on here. Everything else is gonna be fun. Cool. Yeah, everything else will be cool. There's a few good theropods we haven't gotten yeah. to yet. I'm excited for those. I think those. there's a lot of good theropods. Cryolophosaurus? I, you know, I'm kind of sad we haven't gotten that yet. That's going to be a good video. I love. Ceratosaurus? Uh, yeah, Baryonyx? Yeah, uh, uh, Australivinator? I think like, Proceratosaurus. Yeah. Yeah, Proceratosaurus? We have like, fucking Acro? That'll be good. Yeah. Um, I mean, people I, joke I'm, about it, but I'm sorry, excited yeah. for... I was just going to say, like... It is. A, it's a bit of a meme, but I'm honestly very excited for Spinosaurus. Oh, I'm very excited for Spinosaurus. It's gonna be. It's gonna be a crazy video, but like an Allosaurus. Like we got. We got some heavy yeah. hitters in the last. Yeah. Thank God. Chunk of these. Viewership is slowing down, so we got to get the heavy hitters out. <laughs> it's actually not. really. It, it, uh, I was about to say no. It isn't. We just had a few dinosaurs recently that are not. Particular favorites, I think. Yeah, one but, of them was Polycanthus. Yeah. It wasn't right. even yeah. one of our favorites. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> uh, and then Centaurosaurus right after that, which I got to say, editing the Centaurosaurus video made me laugh a lot. Oh uh, my god! There were a lot of funny bits in there. Fortunately, that one bit. Yeah. It, oh, it hurt me to. So funny. It hurt me to have to censor and cut as much as I had to. Oh um, man, we were we were on some good stuff. Yeah, we were. In that episode. We, we um, were on, it was 1 a.m., and we started recording a second video. Amelia. Yeah. Uh, just to make sure you're aware, because I see you rolling two dice. You get to roll three dice with this one. Oh. And Kylosaurus is no longer on the wheel. Everyone can be quiet about it. <laughs> okay, I will, I will just do this over. I thought it was roll two and re-roll one of them. Oh, no, it's, it's roll three and re-roll one. Glaring. Okay. Um... <laughs> No, oh we're going to keep Ankylosaurus on, and then when we roll it, we're going to do it again. Yeah, every time we roll Ankylosaurus, we will do it. Yeah. Okay. And then the cubes go in this big spot. Sco we're, we uh, Fossil cubes go in the lower one. With the Doc Dino is asking, are we doing a Scorpius Rex review this stream? Uh, no. no. Sadly, Sorry. no. And, and thank God we're not. I am so not looking forward to it. I think it's going to be a fun episode because it's going to be a fun fight between yeah. those two. So, yeah. So much. Yeah. Hey, uh, we got a tip on the. Oh. Yeah, you may Ooh. have heard a Quetzalcoatlus honk. Um, 
special Five prize oh, for you. anybody who manages to have that trigger exactly as we would need to censor ourselves in a normal video. <laughs> if to predict a swear. Yeah, predict a Well, if you just tip while Scott's talking, we'll get there soon enough. Hey! <laughs> <laughs> It's, it's correct. It's That's correct. Fair. I pay attention to it to censor. Yeah, me too. <laughs> I, I, I'm now of a acutely sailor. aware. I'm, I'm the, I'm in fact the son of a son of a sailor. <laughs> like, like the Jimmy Buffett song. Yeah. Yes, Matt Hedgern, uh, I actually thought it would be very funny for an April Fool's video to just do a dinosaur we'd already done with no acknowledgement that we'd done the dinosaur already, but uh, we did not have time. James, I'm kicking you. Sorry. It would be funny. No, I'm just kicking you from the spot. Oh, oh, I see. I thought you were kicking me from the stream that I'm hosting. No. <laughs> um, Cody, thank you for the, the yes. super chat. Uh, Cody Bishop much. asks us if we've ever seen the, the Star Trek Voyager episode about the dinos the aliens who turned out to be dinosaurs who invented warp travel to escape the meteor. I have not seen it, but I have seen the design of the dinosaur aliens, and I've seen like some clips from it, and I think it's fun. Because I'm pretty sure they're Parasaurolophus. They are, yes. Uh, I will play the Jaguar formation. Mm. Oh. I saw. I never announced it. I was in the Morrison. I'm throwing it out now. I get four blue cubes. Ah, ah, ah. And the turn around goes to you. Yes, I know the Scorpius Rex is ugly. It, it is so much more than that that I dislike. Um, but we'll do that when we do Scorpius Rex. A video of Alex talking about reptile palettes for three hours would be pretty good. So uh, it, it was an, another video that we joked about doing at some point, either as an April Fool's Day bit or just at some point, is releasing uh fossil prep asmr and it's just eight hours of a microphone right next to an air scribe <laughs> and it's just the loudest most awful noise of me doing fossil prep fossil prep and like relaxing fossil prep and sounds to unwind and study to and it's just... <laughs> that would be fun for, would for be fun. eight hours all right my paleontologist is going to the library and he's going to read a little bit that occasional pipes record. failing hey we don't i don't think we had any pipe failures at harvard while i've been here dalton how do you have four research uh, i got one from my field expedition oh i see okay it gave me a blue a purple a research cube and a, a track because it's one of the funky ones Ooh, which one was it uh it was dig through the pile the nugget sandstone oh the yeah, oh the cool. nugget sandstone's weird yeah, yeah. Which I like. That's a fun way that they did that. We've been asked if we think that any animals could be added to JWE2. I think there's a bunch they could add. Um, oh, this mini I'd love to see. Yeah, and I mean, if the eventual leaks about things that were supposed to be added ever come <laughs> true, I'd be very happy. There were a bunch of things I was really excited to talk about. Um, yeah, we'll I don't see. think those are ever coming to <laughs> Thank you. Thank you for crushing me, Dalton. That's all right. I'm sorry. That's all right. That's I mean, right. maybe they will. Yeah, yeah. Maybe. What were they? Um... It's what micro raptor, oh. uh, austro raptor, die lung, and Cegosaurus, right? Yes, I almost oh, want to think of Pinocchio. Cegosaurus. Oh my cool. god, it would, be cool. it would be really cool. But yeah, it's probably not happening. Okay, so in the specimen lab, oh shit, I take two cards and throw out one with this guy. Yes. Um, yes, if you want to do that, or you can. Okay. Uh, well, you can, there's no discard pile, so you can't do that. Or you can just discard. Okay. So I, I sorry, I take two and yep. throw take out two one. and then throw one away from your hand. It doesn't have to be from the two you drew. I see. Not the global objectives though. I see. I <laughs> 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 I'm like, that's odd. Those don't look like dinosaurs. Here, I'll just put that away because we never use this pile of cards again yeah. for the rest of the game. Um one thing to note, one thing I'll I'll make this reminder now before we've published any holotypes, is to remember that at the end of the game you are penalized the victory point counts of any specimens in your hand that you have not published. That doesn't count for trace fossils, but it does count for any of the, like, holotype specimen cards. Right. Okay. Huh. 
Ooh, Jurassic Canon King makes some good points of asking for a river tour and the, the big tree. I would love to see, in addition to more oh, dinosaurs, oh God, yes. some more um, attractions. More, more attractions and more infrastructure. I'd love to see. I mean, we've got the underwater viewing dome now, right? Yes. Yeah. Which is great. I'd love to see maybe another, like a, a walk through tunnel so you could connect a path through a lagoon. That'd be great. Um, that would be cool. I don't know. How, yeah, I, I mean, I, I say this. I'd love to see more love given to the aviaries and lagoons. I don't really know what they could do to it at this point, but. Also, hi, Kalani. Hi, oh, Kalani. Kalani. What should happen in real life is my question. What? Oh, that you should be penalized for hoarding material without publishing it. Oh, yes. <laughs> oh, <laughs> yes. Well, that would be nice. Well, well. We're going to tap tap the sign of no professional gossip. <laughs> yeah. Yes. <laughs> yep. uh, all of my comments are withheld. Um, in, in Jurassic World, I would love to see. We've been, Going I think Alex has lab. probably said this. Hey, Chris. In the video before. Chris. Um, hi, Chris. I, I want a pro sauropod yeah. very badly. Get over here. Oh my god, same. A pro sauropod would, is is honestly probably the, the one kind of like big group of dinosaurs that I feel is the most lack like its its absence in the game is felt the most. Like there are some some very specific groups of theropods that could be cool to see. Um Yeah. There's various things. Amelia, I'm gonna attempt to. What do you mean you're gonna tempt me? What did you look throw at the off? discard? Why would you do that? <laughs> <laughs> um, Paleo Python. Uh, I did not go to Stony Brook University as an undergrad. I went there for my masters. Um, oh, but actually, it I, was I there while up. I was there I for my masters. Up. Yeah, I fucked. I fucked that up. I thought I would. I thought I also discarded too. So. Well. No, no, you can, you can. It was, I'll, it was instead yeah. of. So I'll, I'll, I'll right. take back Tylo. Actually, I'll okay. just taunt you with it. Yeah, you can do that once you get one of these, uh, one of the achievement things. Lets you do that. Yes. I don't know none of you guys. Uh, I want to make sure I'm not missing any, anything in chat. They need to pass through the aviaries, like the stairways, and through. Yes, I would love that. Submarines yeah. would be cool. Walking animations um, for the Ashtarkids would be. Yeah, yeah. For the Ashtarkid. Yeah. Or is all the pterosaurs? Honestly. Yeah, it'd be good to have modifying the rig and giving them new animations for that would be mm -hmm. really nice. Mm -hmm. Um, I mean, the, the, it's a lot of things that basically we're just kind of like converging on. We want it to be prehistoric kingdom. Yeah, right. How would this game be better if it were a different game? If it were a different game called prehistoric yeah, yeah. kingdom, I'm happy and, that uh, both of them exist turn. as separate games. Me too. Oh yeah. my god, same. I'm going back to the field. My dejected field assistant returns. <laughs> Isaac B. asks us, um, I, hey, I know uh, none of you guys study early sauropods. What do you guys think of Lig Ligdesa Titan? It's got some interesting implications for Cerician evolution. I'm going to Google that because I don't, that's what, what I think about it is I've actually never heard of it. Yeah. I just want to uh, point out I've gotten the the two medicine formation ooh. and the cooler two medicine formation, which I will be going to because I just I, get more stuff. I have. <laughs> I have uh, actually, I copied that directly into Google. Um, there are no results. I mean, is this is this something that was recently published? I don't. Uh... Yeah. Um, tell us more about this Ligdesa Titan. But th this also this sounds is, like we're being set up. This for is as soon as I'm, you said a, it out loud. Oh, it's a, oh my god! It's a. You're gonna scream. Yeah, you guys. Well, I don't get to take all the fossils that I need. I'm having the real experience of digging in the dinosaur park formation. There are too many <laughs> fossils for me to collect. Womp womp! I can't believe I fell. I walked right into that. Don't, um, it was hard to watch. I'm sorry. How how goes the channel trailer? Um, it's going, but it's going slow. Um, because editing videos for release takes precedent, and uh, I have a full time job, and that takes precedent too. So right, but the the, uh, the editing is above the full time job, of course. It is, of right. course. No, my boss. If you watch this ever, no, it doesn't. I promise. <laughs> uh, 
Uh, hey, Christina. Uh, no, uh, I, I need oh, I need to Amelia, dedicate a bit more time to working on it, but. Out. What do I get for pulling my guys back? You get a cube. Oh, oh, why you cube? Them? Uh, no, just one. Just oh, that's stupid. Um, three billion spine points each. <laughs> the Allosaurus video to be uploaded next Saturday is an early birthday present. Well, a happy early birthday to you, Jurassic Swine. I went um, to birthday, but. We won't have that. Ten bucks from Draco Master. Thank you, Draco Master. Hey, thank you. Thanks, my guy. It is indeed located entirely within this YouTube channel. May I see it? Yes. Come and come and watch. Also, so, yes, fishing trips, fishing trips with Dom also take precedent. Well, right. And so Jay, I'm sorry. Yes, Jay. Yes. I'm so you used to being. I'm so used to being informed and mispronouncing the name that I just automatically default to anything <laughs> I say. I'll correct myself. Um, Jay asked, does anyone in the crew have a steaming hot take on literally anything? Yes, we do, and we're keeping those for us. For you right have now. no idea. You well, have no idea. Well, I'm, I think we've got some non-paleo steaming takes. We can oh, yeah, share. like, oh, James, yeah. your conspiracy theory in the, oh, well, Polycanth, in the Polycanthus video. Yeah, I know. I don't want to I don't want to rehash that now. Everybody go watch Polycanthus if you want to hear my conspiracy theory about Hollywood. Um, it's not it's, what you think, it's to not. be clear. <laughs> 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 I'm going the to... second you said that oops i have drawn the erosion card as one of the two that i picked up so i'm going to um hot diggity dog diggity day, diggity day. i'm gonna roll for the the one that i picked up which is the cayenta formation Dinoxels, you're 100 percent correct. The last couple skeleton crew videos Six. have been insane. We have been. That's cool. You you guys would not believe me if I told you what the original runtime of the Polycat this. Oh my god! Oh, 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 yeah. <laughs> it was wild. And yeah. then hey, Swamp Ape, thank you very much. My chimp fear is common sense. <laughs> 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 uh, we now reshuffle the expedition pile. Ap Apache has asked me to explain Hollywood. So at risk of getting into a debate about the conspiracy theory, my, my thing is that to some degree, it's and I think to a large degree, I think the modern spoiler culture that tries to drive people for major temple releases into theaters really quickly is uh, was kind of engineered as a way to make people not want to read reviews or anything about a movie before they saw it, which would mean that movies don't need to be good as long as they're highly anticipated. Uh, because everybody would go see it in the first couple of weekends and not read about it beforehand. That is that is my conspiracy theory. I'm pulling my guys out. We're doing a tactical retreat. Oh, oh Kaiju, Kaiju fan. fan! Hello, thank you. Hey. Uh, they want they want to ask two questions. Kaiju fan. Hey everyone, hope you're doing well. Uh, we are. Uh, we wanted to ask two questions. Will you possibly cover any mod modded dinosaurs for Jurassic World Evolution Two after you finish the base roster? And do you think you'll do dino rankings for other games like Ark? Um, dino rankings questions. for Ark would be rough. That would be that would be rough. Yeah, but I sorry, oh, you go, go ahead, ahead, Dalton. You read the well, questions. I, saying, I my initial thought on this is I can see us doing rankings for other games, but I don't th I don't know that we would do it in the exact same format as we do for Jurassic World. Yeah. So like I don't, if we did Ark, and we may do that someday. It would probably be ranking all or most of the designs in one video as opposed to a separate video for each one. Because, I mean, as you know, we rank the designs in each video, but each one is also kind of treated as just like a little mini documentary about each dinosaur and what we know about it. And so there would be no cause to like repeat that if we've done one in Jurassic World versus an arc. If it was a new thing like that wasn't in Jurassic World Evolution 2, maybe. Um, but, but we'll see. Also, the designs are in most of the, these kinds of games are universally worse than even the ones in Jurassic World Evolution, which are pretty good, but for the most part. So, well, and I mean, in Prehistoric Kingdom, it's the opposite problem, right? They're all yeah, so yes, yeah. Prehistoric Kingdom, there'd be no point in ranking them because they're all S, they're all S or H tier. Um, yes, absolutely. Um, I have two things to say. Uh, one of which is I'm publishing the first holotype, everybody. Oh, so Ooh. paying three research. What's it going to be? And. Dino Tom, I, that's true. Uh, for Bracky. Ooh, cool. Uh, and then I will pass the turn around. The second thing I'm going to say is, I know I've said this before in previous streams, um, 
the arc pterosaurs are the worst pterosaurs I've seen in modern They're so media. bad. Yeah. It's it's like now, now I, hey, we, we show always, some respect to Ark Survival Evolved. That was my YouTube debut, recall. It was. Uh, it was. Yes. In in a video that I was compensated financially to make at a rate far greater than running my own YouTube channel. <laughs> yeah, you weren't paying yourself. There you go. Well, that's true, but you know. Yeah. Oh, we do have backup for the pre PK mammal videos, Wildlife Wire. We we may be sending some messages your way at some point. I took um I, I went to the museum, by the way, oh, and exchanged well some fossils. Uh, the other part, would we, would we ever cover modded content for Jurassic World Evolution 2 once we're we done have. with the main stuff? We, uh, yeah, we have in the streams. I wouldn't be surprised if we end up doing some like main channel episodes after we've gone through the main roster of the game. Yeah. Oh, by the way, I'm publishing something, everyone. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to use four research cubes and my f five of my Cretaceous research things. To publish Tyrannosaurus Rex. We're starting oh my god. Wow. Starting off strong. Starting strong. Starting strong with, um, yeah, with thank you for eggs. eggs. Oh, with eggs. Yes, this is the most amazing discovery in history. <laughs> um, and it's worth nine, no, eight, 11 points. 11 points. That's pretty good. That is. I mean, it's not... just just wait until a tiny little Triassic pterosaur gets yeah. discovered <laughs> and it's 200,000 yeah, points. Right. It's not Cholesteventus. Yeah, Swamp Ape, you're right. It is a mini documentary if you actually just take the content about the dinosaur in every video. Prehistoric <laughs> <laughs> um, Kingdom just teased a new creature. What do you think it is? Uh, I think I had a thought about it. I need to look at the thing again. Let me, I'm gonna, I'll pull it up on my cellular device. That was a very old man way of referring to it, a phone. On his cellular yeah, device. on my cellular device. Oh, dear. Uh, yeah, I, I saw a lot of people saying that it was possibly... They said specifically it wasn't a theropod. Which makes me sad. I've gotten <laughs> a lot of those. Yeah, but we always want more. Hey, Specimen Zach, thank you. Oh, thank uh, you. Thoughts uh, on Disney's Dinosaur? I love Disney's Dinosaur. I, uh, that movie was very special to me. Uh for a lot of my life, and I still think the soundtrack goes unreasonably hard. I it goes so hard. I, I yeah. definitely have not watched it in the last ten years. No. Probably last fifteen. I would, I, you know, I'd be interested to watch it again and see how it holds up as an adult. I, but I it's remember a good movie. loving it. Yeah, yeah. It's a good movie. It's a good movie. Yeah. Um, I've I've watched it relatively recently. It was in the last like five years. Um, and like. The story itself is pretty great. There's some individual scenes that suck. The story itself is pretty fun. Uh, the characters are fun and memorable. And the soundtrack goes unreasonably hard. Yeah. Um, ooh, we got the questions about the James Gandolfini casting in the Bone Wars movie. And mm. so I will derail the conversation to be able to talk about this. <laughs> um, so unlike you, James. So first, yeah, I know. First question is from Isaac B., if the movie had been made, what historical moments would you guys be most eager to see portrayed on screen? I, I don't really feel like... I mean, obviously the inciting incidents of the feud between them would be really cool to see, especially with, like, really, really good actors. Yeah. Um, I think that scenes of them making important big discoveries of realizing kind of the, the scope of the world of the past that they're uncovering would be really cool. Because I think you have to at some point realize like these early paleontologists i mean these guys were certainly not the earliest but they're in the early generations the concept of how much geologic time had passed and how many fossil animals awaited discovery was just not really there and so it must like every time they found something that was completely unprecedented it must have been amazing um and yes at Lu mr loophole it was supposed to be steve carell opposite james gandolfini was oh, it the it's so good. Oh, that's great casting. Yeah. Oh wow, that's a it, shame. Oh. And yeah, the project is probably canceled. Dinos else. Yeah. And I know I need to go now. I apologize. It it, it makes me okay. so sad because like, it, honestly, I think that the way to do a Bone Wars movie is 
honestly to say it's an adaptation of um, Crichton's last book. Mm. Um, Dragon Teeth. Yeah. It's also a good name. Um, even if even if the titular Dragon Teeth are dumb in the book. <laughs> Has anybody read Dragon Teeth? No. Oh, yeah. yeah. I've read it. It, um, it, so it's pretty clearly really unfinished, right? Oh, it's it's so unfinished. Yeah. Dalton, I want you to guess what the the titular dragon teeth that are like the ultimate like prize, um, in the book are, and th- they are expressed to be very rare, very large, and incredibly important. Are, are they just T Rex teeth? N- no, that would make too much sense. And Amelia, the turn right is. Are they Bellum Knights? They're Brontosaurus teeth. Oh. Yeah. Okay. It's like that's just not what Brontosaurus teeth are like. <laughs> but like, I, I think that if memory serves, there's one scene in that book that really sticks with me that just kind of really show it's emblematic of exactly like the type of relationship that these two guys had. It's that um, after the main character who flip flops back and forth between both sides of the bone wars um, flips from Marsh's side to Cope's side when he's like, wow, this guy actually has a personality and like is interesting to talk to and isn't a, Great Dismal Swamp, as some have been. <laughs> Which as, we've covered before. That must be a pun about his name being Marsh, right? Absolutely. Yeah, right. I'm also I'm playing the Nugget Sandstone because it's fun. Um, uh, that Cope does one of his signature Cope moves, uh, which is setting up a fake dinosaur um, to, oh, I only get, oh, that sucks. I only get one blue. That's awful. Mm. Um, <laughs> get nuggeted sandstone and, <laughs> and I get I, a research point. I was more consonants in those get words nuggeted. than I was able to say. <laughs> nuggeted sandstone. Nuggeted sandstone. <laughs> um, but so, uh, Cope does his Cope thing and sets up a, a fake, um, fake fossil and talks about it around some of the people who he suspects of being spies for Marsh. And then when Marsh is, when Marsh and his men come in, they like turn on all the lights and like freak the hell out of them and they all run away. And Cope has a scene where he has a rifle on Marsh and has him in his sights and looks over at the other guy. He's just like, I'm not going to do it. I just wanted to know in this moment that his life was in my hands. And he was like, Oh, Oh, Okay. It, it's it's an odd book. I like how it basically halfway through is just like it. It would be more fun if this book was a western, right? And then it just becomes a western, and it just becomes a boring western where nothing happens. Yeah, it. I uh, it, it's not terrible. I mean, it's not not worth reading, but it's not. It's certainly not Crichton's best. No, I'm publishing. Oh my a god, a Triassic pterosaur. Oh my god, you've published Calestaventus. It's almost as cool as a T Rex. <laughs> Um, and then I, that's my turn. Has to turn right. Uh, some, uh, sorry, Dinosaurs and More has mentioned a couple times that, uh, that they would love to see Hesperonis in Jurassic World Evolution 2. And I think that would be very cool in the Lagoons. And apparently they've made a song about it uh, on their on their channel, so check that out. Um, but yeah, I think Hesperonis would be cool. Although I I mean, I'm I'm biased against wanting more small things in the game, but I do think it would be cool. All the... All right, I'm trading in my Triassic fossils. So one of them is for two Jurassic fossils, and the other one is for two research cubes. Uh, Mr. Loophole asks, have any of y'all seen Dr. James Napoli's musical movie Wonka? For those of you (laughs) who thought it was awesome, very, um, for, uh, uh, I for one thought it was awesome, very unexpected that James had such a good singing voice. The movie itself is nine out of 10. Um, I will say it's also especially unexpected because, uh, I've never hated a thing more than James hates musicals. Uh, That's true. I I didn't know this about you, James. I hate them so much. (laughs) You had a direct, really a surprise. You had a direct quote once, James. That was, it wasn't just, I don't like musicals. It was close to um, uh, fucking Roger Ebert's quote about video games of they like are not and can never be art. That uh, James said something along the lines of like, I do not like them and you cannot make a good movie. 
I, I that said is a musical. No, I think my exact quote was, "I don't, I don't disbelieve that there are good musicals, but there is no story that is better because it's a musical." Oh, that's what it was. Which I stand by. I like how that's what gets our comments going. Yeah, controversy. Yeah, Rain is a great movie. A great. I movie musical. For <laughs> once, will agree. I don't have any interest in musicals. Thank you, Amelia. I, like, I I think the specifically the sentiment that nothing is made better by being a musical like that's mm. more for me like there yeah. are some that I'm fine with, but I as a rule don't like. Them. Alana, I, you're right. How are people surprised by this? I think <laughs> this is the most on on brand. It is on brand. You're absolutely yeah. right. Because um, it's also <laughs> following that video came out already where we learned that music and you are not on the oil same and page. water. Yes. Yeah. 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 No, that video did come out. Yeah. I don't like, again, I'm not, I'm not saying that there aren't good musicals. I know that there are many, many things that are many wonderful musicals, but I think all of them would be better as non musicals to pass that along. Um, so what, I, what James is really saying in, is saying here is when he watches um, Dirty Dancing, which I guess he does all the time is when he sees a town where dancing is illegal. He's like, this is, this is what I want. <laughs> That's listen. I, I don't like dancing, so I'll I'll throw that. Uh, I'm, and I'm pulling my guys back. So um, no, I. It, it is hard to say. I like musicals. I've kind of gone. I had, had a roller coaster relationship with them, mostly because like when I was young, we um we went to the, the the dinner theater a lot, and it was a lot of fun, and I loved seeing the musicals there as a kid. And then I was in musicals in high school, uh, in middle school. Amelia, you're up. Just so you know. I was confusing yeah. Footloose and Dirty Dancing. Never mind. Oh. <laughs> um, I, yeah, I did a lot of, I did almost all the musicals during high school, and that was a lot of fun. And then afterwards, I think I kind of got a little burnt out on them. But now I am, uh, I'm back in on it. But yeah, like, there are, I think, stories. Someone mentions Hades Town. Isaac has mentioned Hades Town, which is a story that, well, I mean, that story works without music because it's classic Greek mythology. But that, that, like, the fact that they tell it in the way that they do, as a musical is incredible and like elevates the story and like tells it in a different and impactful way that I think matters in terms of, of, of just thinking of a story that's made better for being a musical. Frankly, I think I enjoy legally blonde, the musical more than I enjoy legally blonde, the movie, which isn't to say that I don't enjoy the movie. I just think it, it almost makes more sense as a musical because everything's kind of heightened and a little bit, um, not dreamlike isn't the right word, but it's a little bit removed, more removed from reality, and so the this, the kind of the zaniness of the story works more as a musical. Um, not that it doesn't work as a movie, but I just think it's a little better as a musical. So that's my that would be my candidate for media improved through musical retelling. Um, Hades Town is is equally good. I just I don't know. If I want to say it improved on a classical myth. It's just a different way of of telling that story, and that's like what we do as people. So, which is very also a cool thing. I, I've seen the I've seen the comment in here. James is very wrong about a lot of things, but we love him for that. <laughs> uh, I, all I will offer is an au contraire. But um, I want to also defend myself from Alex in the comments, acting as a, a wild card force of destruction. <laughs> I am not wrong about music because I do yes. a like music. <laughs> <laughs> B, I have never issued an opinion about whether music is good or not. I just, uh, <laughs> again, I just don't, like, I don't have the intuitive understanding of it that a lot of people do, which, uh, as I think I hopefully communicated in the video, is something that I'm not happy about because it makes it harder to find music I enjoy. I would like uh, to understand it. I'll also, I'll, I'll quickly switch switch lanes right here and scroll up a little bit to... Uh... Wanyo, Wanjo, Mason, uh, Manson up there who said, Scott, I need to have your approval on this. Bone Wars movie fan cast. Chris Pratt is Edward Drinkercope and Ryan Gosling is Avniel Charles Marsh. I really like, I, I think Gosling would be better as Cope uh, yeah. because yeah. Marsh needs to be, Marsh needs to be kind of awful. Just, Gosling has too much of a magnetic, like, likable personality. And if your nickname is the Great Dismal Swamp, I think by definition you cannot be played by Ryan Gosling. I, I think so. Amelia, did you take your turn? I have published Nick DeSaurus. Yeah, also Ooh. Alex is based here with, like, Hunchback 
a, a lot of the Disney classics. They are better yeah. for being musicals. Like, I mean, look at the live action remakes when some of them took songs out and they are just worse. Not just because of the visuals and because of the fact that they're soulless corporate things, but like. Well, because the songs are worse for most of them. Mm-hmm, like, yeah. that's it. Like, I think classic Disney stands on its own. Like, I think I was not. I don't include that when I talk about musicals, even though I suppose they technically are. Like, it's a completely different. You know you're making a good argument when you need to make qualifiers to exclude things that you like in your argument. It's no, I think they're different. It doesn't, I don't, they don't have the musical, like, vibe. It's it's like like when people say that they don't like country music, except Johnny Cash. And it was like, yeah, you do. You just don't like to admit that Johnny Cash is. No, you just have to, you have to, you don't like stadium country. Yeah, it's also changed a lot over time. And I, I mm-hmm. may not understand much about music, but I do know enough to say that country music, when Johnny Cash was singing it, was different. In a good way. Right, I will play the um, Hell Creek Formation. Because oh, it's the Hell Creek I, Formation. I will say, in the, the live action Beauty and the Beast, to its credit, added a song for the Beast that I think is very good. Um, and the Beast doesn't get a tremendous amount of songs in the, uh, in the Disney movie, the animated one. I, I have a fun fact about Beauty and the Beast. Uh, what's that? Um, it's that. Um, have has everybody here met Stuart Samita? No. Yeah, mm-hmm. I, I haven't met him, but um, well, okay, I haven't met him personally. Is, but I know. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, I met him personally. He's a rad dude. He's at. Um, where in San Di- uh, Where in California is he at? San Diego. I think San Bernardino. San Bernardino. I think so. Um, so he's a really awesome paleontologist. He's a really really cool dude. Uh, I met him for the first time at a Calgary SVP um, when he noticed that my name was Scott Johnston. And he was like, oh, my God, I have a really good friend named Scott Johnston. And then he was like, hey, do you want some tequila? (laughs) And he (laughs) handed me a flask and told me that his uh, his very good friend, whose name is Scott Johnston, was the head animator for Beauty and the Beast. Oh, that's cool. And did the... um, the levitating dance scene. Uh, oh, like, wow. The, animation like, in there. And he was just like, oh, yeah. He was, he was like, oh, yeah. And, like, you have the tea and everything. It's crazy. And it was like, oh, wow, yeah. You do know a Johnston if they're very insistent about having the tea in their last name. <laughs> um, yeah, it was just, it was neat. He's a really cool guy. Um, he Ooh. actually, fun I've fact. published um, Marshasaurus. I'm sorry to interrupt you, Scott. But no, it's all good. I needed to announce this. Um, Stuart Samita has... Uh, uh, is one of the very frequently used like uh an- an- like animal anatomical experts that yeah. movies uh go to um to make their animals look like they're moving in a logical way uh like i mean hell he was consulted on how to train your dragon and stuff like even if it isn't a- an actual animal uh, they go to him, and he's really, really good. He did. I think he did stuff behind a- Avatar. Um, he, he did a lot of stuff with uh, like the Golden Compass and things. It was really, really cool. He he's given some phenomenal talks. Someone asked in the chat. I'm gonna try and find because they've asked it a couple times. I do want to. Uh, make sure that we answer. And oh yeah, uh, Kaiju fan 1954 asked. If we have thoughts on Keanu Reeves being in the third Sonic movie, he was announced, I think, today that he's going to be it's playing. It's so good. He's it's voicing perfect. Shadow the Hedgehog. I think, listen, I've got no skin in the game. I know nothing about Sonic, and I don't really I've never seen any it. of these new movies. But I, I, I know enough about Shadow the Hedgehog to think that that is good casting. So They, they make John Wick play him. It's great. <laughs> when when Shadow's entire personality is has gotten. Yeah. I think, <laughs> now that I think about it, just like I think those movies in general have been very well cast. At basically yeah. every level, like oh uh, yeah, Sonic Knuckles, uh, Tails is just the, the regular Tails voice actor, which is a good thing. Um, Jim Carrey as Eggman, all good. perfect casting. Apparently, all of my swine points have been revoked because I don't like musicals. Well, that's you know uh, that's gonna happen. Sometimes. How are you yeah. ever gonna financially recover from this? <laughs> oh, oh, I'm not. <laughs> um, <laughs> I'm sorry. I, like again, I'm also like. I think to the point of of Amelia talking about the Disney musicals, again, I'm not saying that they can't be good. Like, I'm going to call those musicals, and they're great movies. All of these classic That's Disney not to, movies Don't right. misquote me. No, no, I know. I call those musicals. Well, right. No, I'm saying I would call them that, but I would not... 
I would say that I think as really compelling non-musicals, they could be better. The live-action Disney movies are bad because they're soulless corporate cash grabs, I think, not because they're not musicals. I have no more swine point privileges. We also, I want to point out for all the viewers of the stream, we had what briefly appeared to be a massive stream viewer decline after I said I don't like musicals, which was very funny. Oh, did enough. we really? Yeah, did we funny. really? It looks like we I'm lost about 20 clouds. viewers immediately. But it, How many subscribers did we No, we didn't. Did We've been hovering at this number. No, for no, us. we have. It, it, adjust, it, it updated over time. It shows Ooh. like local fluctuations and then it kind of smooths out afterward. Um, I don't know what YouTube uses to figure out who's viewing <laughs> concurrently. Um, uh, Draco, Draco Master has asked about the Fallout show, which I have not seen yet because I'm Same. waiting to watch it, uh, to watch it with Kalani because she Aww. really likes Fallout. And um, now she's already watched the whole thing and told me it was good. Um, <laughs> but we're gonna we're gonna watch a little bit. Uh, we're gonna be able to see each other this weekend, so she's oh, nice. gonna, we're gonna watch a little bit. Yeah, we Alex Shelby and I watched it all uh, on Sunday, and it's great. I really, really liked the Fallout show. I it, yeah, from what I understand, it's it's fantastic. It's it's, it's painful in a way because it could have and been Al- Halo because show. of the Halo yes. show. And Alex made it more painful because he kept bringing it up during the first couple episodes of just how much better it is than the Halo show. And I like you know I maybe even a bit ashamed to say it. I love Halo. Like it's it. I've always loved Halo, and it it just sucks. Why would you be so- ashamed to that? Because it's rad. It's, it's uh, wait, I'm sorry. Of... I've got a clarification just to ask here. Isn't it? But yes. Um, for Specimen Lab, if I'm there with the field assistant, I draw two and discard one of them, right? Uh, that is correct, yes. Okay, or discard one from my hand. Discard one from your hand. Yep. One from my hand. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah. Um, yeah, the Halo show, they could have made a really good show, and they just really made a bad show. Um, have any of us been to Dino Land, uh, Dino Land USA and Disney World? I have. I enjoy Dino Land. I... I'm sad a little. I'm sad that it's going away, and I'm also sad that it. Um, this is this is going to sound stupid because it's Disney Disney World. Um, I'm sad okay. that it caters so much to children. Like, <laughs> how dare? Not, yeah, how dare Disney World cater to children? No, but even more of so, all places, even more so than the rest of Animal Kingdom. Though it's like it's like most of Dino Land is like a midway and like kids activity zone, like really young kids, um, and like except for the dino the dinosaur ride, which is pretty cool. Um, yeah, it could have it could have been at the same level as the rest of Animal Kingdom. I think, and it may have been better. But I like Dino Land. And then we do have um, I'm I'm, I'm powering through these chats. Sorry, uh, uh, it is what it is. Asks could an uh, in, in super chats. So thank you very much. Uh, could an Unin Lodging become a mega theropod given their atrophied cotyphemoralis, or would that be a hard cap on their size? Ooh, um, so my undergrad my thesis was on the cotyphemoralis. Uh. I don't know if that would be a hard cap on their size, but I right back. I do think it would probably if they became a very large theropod, they'd look pretty weird. They would they would certainly be compensating for the loss of that large muscle in some way. Um But yeah, I don't I don't see any reason that they could not be a they could not reach mega theropod sizes. That said, well, you know, paravians in general, peneraptorians in general, have smaller uh, caudofemoralis muscles, and they can still get fairly large. Oviraptorosaurs still have a bigger one primitively, so Gigantoraptor is probably not suffering from that yet. I don't know. There's something to it. It does seem like the theropod lineages that have smaller ones tend to be smaller, but then again, it's kind of phylogenetically correlated with miniaturization as well, so I don't know if there's a hard correlation there. I am publishing uh, Daemonosaurus. Ooh, Ooh, somebody's on the Triassic kick. And passing the turn around. Thank you. Mm -hmm. So, um, on the topic of video game adaptations, do people have a favorite one? Of a video, or or favorite other media, Mm -hmm. I guess probably screen, film media. Do, um, so, video do, game adaptations. Dalton, I just th- drew an erosion event. Do we have to play it? Uh, did you? You drew two. Yeah, I did. So you have the option of you can either do the the field site that you drew, and then do the erosion event and just reshuffle the deck, or you can do the erosion event and take its thing of like playing at another spot. So it's up to you which one you do. 
I see. Um, but we will reshuffle no matter what. Okay. I am going to go to my field site. So um, erosion is events going to come down. Video game adaptation. Well, so I, I, I'll, I'll full disclosure. I have not watched all of the Last of Us show. I've only watched the first episode. Um, I recognize that it. Got to watch very episode good. three. It, it's so good. I, I know enough seven about it. Cretaceous cubes, which is more than I can take. That um, I don't. I don't know that I want to be that sad. <laughs> At a, I'll watch it at a point when I'm more prepared to be that sad. But I, oh, I, that's I, like I, me when Bojack ahead. Horseman. Um, oh, you know what? Crap. Uh, people in the like Fallout is is maybe my favorite at the moment, but yeah, people in the chat have pointed out Arcane, and honestly, Arcane. that's probably my favorite video game. Arcane's adaptation. not even close. It it, it which it upsets me. Um, it's League of Legends. I, I have said several times that the that the worst thing about Arcane is that it might convince some people to play League of Legends. Yeah. Which is uh an unforgivable evil. Um I will say uh besides Arcane, I've watched the show I've watched the show like five, six times. It's so good. Um I'm so excited for season two. Probably yeah, um uh, excluding that. I have a real love for the Castlevania series. That's also really good, yeah. It's so good, and it has no right to be. The writing, it, it, honestly, besides just the animation being gorgeous, the writing is so, so funny. Um, And what else is funny is I'm I'm kicking Dalton Ooh. out, and I'm publishing a critcher. Oh, he he hoo hoo very funny. Indeed. He he hoo hoo uh, He he hoo hoo indeed, because I'm publishing... With three green, ah, uh, ah, uh, ah, uh, and two white, ah, uh, ah, uh, ah. Uh. I'm publishing Yorgi oh, again oh. for the second <laughs> game in a row. What a bastard. What? You discard Tylosaurus, you publish Jormungandr. <laughs> You're just doing psychological warfare to try to make Amelia lose. You have no idea how much I was like. Do I just discard Yorgi? But like, oh. I need to do it as the. I need to do it as the bit. I I need to play Yorgi. And the t the turd rat is yours. Ooh, what am I going to do with it though? Is yeah. the question. What is to be done with with you? I'm going to rat? send my field assistant to the specimen lab. I'm going to draw two. And I'm going to discard Solaris. Sorry, Alex. If you could add any dino fight to the Jurassic franchise with any number of dinosaurs, what would it be? Uh, sauropod and make them win something. Seriously, I want to see that. That would be that'd be good. Yeah. Prehistoric Kingdoms, Leelanosaura. It's gorgeous. Oh my god, it's so pretty. All of the different variants with all of the different levels of fluff. I have pulled my men out. Oh, did we never do the erosion event? Oh, we never did the erosion event. Oh, but I don't think anyone's been to the field, so it doesn't really matter. I I really like that um, prehistoric kingdom in their speculation in the designs is doing speculation that's based off of, like, for lack of a better term, actual speculation. Like, um, for the Velociraptor, there's like, hey, we have a, a version that has a scaleless snout. And for the Lealinosaura, it's like it has different levels of fluff because we do because for different levels of cold that it could be in that environment. And it's like that's really neat. I like that a lot. That is very cool. Prehistoric Kingdom once again comes in clutch as being the game I have always wanted to exist. Yeah, mm -hmm. I am so excited for being able to play that more. Um. Jurassic Swine asked, why do we hate League of Legends? It, it's mostly That's the community <laughs> around League of Legends. Like, it's a, like, League is a MOBA. It's a fun game. I've had, I've played a lot of League of Legends in my time. Um, but it, it, it's fun until it becomes frustrating. Um, and it very easily becomes frustrating. And the community is very toxic. That's an understatement. Yeah. It's like saying that Chernobyl was a bad day. <laughs> It's like objectively uh, true, but I have fond and, memories of dealing with the Tom Clancy's Rainbow Six Siege community. 
Oh, that was. I, I like how you call it by its full government name. I do. I, <laughs> I, I that was my little bit. Always, I was like, oh, I can't wait to play Tom Clancy's Rainbow Six Siege. I'm actually amazed that that game is still going because, like, it kind of it got weird and wacky a while ago, and it's oh, it did more only game. ever grown uh, player base, which is pretty cool. I I really like the um the memes that I see every once in a while about it, where it's like operators in season whatever. It's like I have a hologram projector that can perfectly mimic every single thing about me and shoot back and this is the most life-changing technology that the world has ever seen operator in season one hammer well well right <laughs> right i mean that's that's pretty much it <laughs> all right i'm going um, to i'm gonna bring my paleontologist to the library and i'm do... gonna do some research league is a crippling addiction too um now someone asked and i want to make sure Address it. Uh, oh yeah, Kevin Prem asks worst dinosaur versus question that you guys have ever been asked. Um, I'm trying to Ooh. think on that. It's a good Mosasaurus question. and Megalodon, neither of which are dinosaurs, but I get it all the time, <laughs> and it's pointless because they didn't live together. But also, I don't care. <laughs> I I don't like any of the who would win questions because, like, I mean, every time I don't know. It's like every time you have to be at levels of atomic bomb and, and coughing baby, like. <laughs> <laughs> you know to know what the answer is so kevin prem you're correct yeah I, I, I have also watched a decent amount of russian badger it's very day. funny yeah. um i like when he we... revealed that he was just a finance guy in san francisco who also was a video game youtuber right yeah he was just oh like oh my god I, I like he described his job as just i put on a white shirt and then i go to a building where i talk on the phone to other people oh. who wear white shirts um crap sorry to interrupt we, we need to pick our first um bonus oh. oh when did that happen uh it should have happened when scott published yorgi oh, oh sorry that's okay um i'll also say i actually probably the worst who would rather uh, who would win question that i've had uh was more or less of my own making also draco master five bucks which mammal do you want most in pk uh i'll, I'll put a pin in my question for a minute or in my answer for a minute think on that it's a good question oh then while you're thinking i'll finish um uh we did a while ago during one of our uh nerd lunch talks through these informal talks that we do on thursdays we had a whole bracket of who would win questions and uh it came down to t-rex versus chronosaurus um and it got more and more ridiculous as we kept going on about it like what if the t-rex has a gun um well i mean that's a good that's a good thing to bring up it is it, it does have small arms so that's true oh my god i think i'm kicking you from the game <laughs> what, would I, what, what would i want probably a calicathir yep that would be if, mine. if it's not marine a calicathir um then i'll i'll give the other basic answer of uh, honestly i i was going to say um some sort of some sort of one of them hell pigs hmm. but um oh it's back to me um yes, yes. honestly i i want to see their version of andrew's arcus oh yeah i was i was going to say andrew's arcus well, you how, were how gonna, you gonna, going say to say gonna say it. <laughs> how are you gonna say it? I was gonna say it like that, but well, I was gonna say it more JFK, but now I'm not going to. Um, <laughs> Recalling. I, you know what I want from PK for mammals? I want just a normal one. I want the one. I, I want one that you can kind of just plop into populate an enclosure. I want like a little Stenomylus or something. Hmm. One of the many extinct animals. Stenomylus would be. Gr oh my yeah. god. Yeah. Well, That's you know, like idea. I feel like it's something we lack a lot in a lot of the park builders. Like JWE two, I think really suffers for it. It's only ornithomimids and dryosaurus that you can use to kind oh. of like just add life. Mm -hmm. You know, and I think right now the mammal roster in PK is a little bit like really cool mammal heavy. Mm -hmm. And you know, lacks like deer, antelope, all these cool things, Cam camelids. Mm -hmm. Also, Kevin. Yes, I am aware. I, I I've watched Primal. I love Primal. Rose. Primal's so good. I have incredibly mixed feelings on the ending. Um, I but it's a great going show. Going to the field. Yes, Amelia. Do you have a mammal you would like to see in Prehistoric Kingdom? 
I have no idea what the current roster is, so Ooh. apologies if I say something that is already in it. But things that I would Hell Creek formation. Sorry, Amelia. Just I are not there already. Either Andrew Sarkis is a good one, or like a big wait. This is wrong. A big horrible hyena don would be cool. Ooh, yeah. Mm. Um, or oh, I just had it. Um, Bison Latifrons. That one's been, uh, they've teased that one for a while. It's definitely coming okay. in. Good. Because it's, they're so ridiculous. I never understood. It's one thing to hear, you know, ho horns that are 10 feet across. And quite another to behold them. It's so cool. Bison are so cool. Ooh, what about that, um... Amelia, you're up. What was that lion-sized otter? Oh, yeah, that would be cool. Or something like Simba Kubwa. Simba Kubwa, isn't that a um, creodont? Uh, I'm looking it up. Hey, Trail Mix Up, thank you for the uh, $10 super chat. Yeah, we've got, we, also, we have another super chat that uh, scrolled up. I'm going to go back to it. Oh, good uh, idea. To make sure that we. It's a hyenodon. It. Okay. Nice. I would love to. Sorry, the. The YouTube chat was acting up in a major way. Rapporus seventy seven uh, is a super chat, so thank you very much for that. Asks, uh, was wondering our thoughts on the Amber Isles trailer uh, with the seeming dawn of a, of a new dinosaur game frontier for cute games, walking PvP in parks. We were I, we were gonna make a reaction to that and then kind of forgot. Yeah, I actually not, we've been crazy busy. Yeah, I've not watched it. I'm it's, aware it looks really cute, and I'm excited. Hey, maybe to we watch should it. do a reaction to it. Maybe we should. I I like. Do what is the backstory behind that known? I am interrupting to publish the oh. double beam. Oh um, well, my my beams have been doubled. Wow, uh, ten points. Beam double those beams, really everyone. Expanding. Holy moly! It would be five points, but it's doubled. Yeah. <laughs> um, Sorry. you were gonna say something. Oh, James. just the backstory about Amber Isle. I know Scott. You told me a little bit about it. I don't know if that's publicly known or whether. We oh, can oh, chat about oh! It. You mean of its development? Yes. Um, uh, I I don't know the facts exactly, so I don't want to say something that's wrong. That's a fair point. So let's move on, and then um, eventually maybe we'll learn the facts. Yes, I'm. But I am gonna kick you out, Amelia, and I'm going to publish. You publishing? I'm publishing. <laughs> I, I I don't I'm I'm changing that immediately. I really don't like how that sounded. Publishing? <laughs> really? You don't like that? <laughs> Not a fan of publishing. <laughs> um Ornithomimus. Nice. Actually, I'll do I'll do one more. And I'll do it with an amber. Ooh. Cool. Of the aisle. Of the Isle um, variety, I'm I'm personally really really excited for um, Amber Isle. I think it, it um, I I think the character designs are adorable. I think they're really creative. I like the little Dunkelostius man who has braces, um, and stuff. It's they're they're super cute. They look really fun, and it also being a little like, um, uh like general store managing game kind of like um like moonlighter and stuff i think is fun as well with the little animal crossing bits to it but yeah it looks like a blast uh yeah yeah i i'm excited for there to be another kind of cozier game um because i like paleopines a lot but paleopines there's not a lot of gameplay there you know, I, I'm excited for them to expand it. Like, I just, once I got through the story, I was like, okay, you know, um, I have my save and everything, and I can go back in and be cozy. But, like, you know, I'm hoping that they expand the story, add a little bit more to do. So it'll be nice to have another game, too, so you can kind of switch it up between them when you're in that kind of mood. Mm -hmm. um, am I aware of Parkosaurus? Yes, I am. Um, but we got a question from Specimen Zach about yes, fossil thank you. And I'm going to take my turn while that happens. And my turn is very simple, because I have to withdraw my men. Okay. Uh, Scott, you've unlocked your other uh, person. Oh, uh, yes, I have. Secondary field assistant. Amelia, you are up if you don't. Um, oh. So, Fossil Fighters. Um, yes, I've heard of Fossil Fighters. I've never played it. 
Same. Sadly. I think it it came out because it's on the DS and I had a DS, but I think it came out a little bit beyond my time of, of um, playing what? DS games. Playing DS Same. games, yeah. Mm-hmm. Very, very sadly. Um, but I will also answer another question that came afterwards and also before that. I have a been. game question very quickly. Oh, if yes. I, I have the field assistant in the collections. Can I only do one trade or like can I throw in two purple cubes to get? Like, do I, can I only trade in one cube or can I trade in multiple cubes? You can, you can, um, well, the field assistant can trade as many as long as you're doing only colored the cubes one. or colored cubes or. Yeah. Or color cubes, right cubes, but not both. Okay. But okay. you, I had my paleontologist in there, and your assistant can't bump my paleontologist. Oh, sorry. Here, so I'll swap them with. Okay. Oh, sorry. So I'll say. So um, now you can do both if you want. Okay. To Emiliano, yes, I do drink mate. Mate is delicious. I was introduced to it down in Rio Grande do Sul, and it was awesome. I really liked it. What happened to my field assistant? Hold on a second. Oh, there he is. Okay, never mind. <laughs> Just, yeah, they kind of like got stuck to each other. Um, and I think I only dropped one purple cube in there, so I wanted to drop two. One. Yeah, I'm just excited for the wave of dinosaur games that are coming out. Yeah, I, I mean. Selfishly, oh, yeah. we're, we're always going to have content. Well, okay, I'll I'll stoke some fires a little bit. Did you guys see um, the newest Instinction video with their uh, their Smilodon? Their Smilodon that everyone's mad at. I did. I really liked it. Well, here's the problem: great. if they hadn't shown the skeleton, if they hadn't shown the skeleton, yeah, yeah because I, the model itself looks pretty damn I, good. I am begging people to understand that the animation skeleton does not have to actually reflect the skeletal anatomy of the animal. That too. Yeah, well, I mean, this is not directed at at Scott. This is directed at Twitter. no, yeah, over no, 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 sorry, yeah. yeah. You know, I, I wasn't saying anything. No, I that. no. Yeah. Well, you weren't saying anything. That's why I thought you were mad at me. <laughs> I'm sorry. No, I thought that was like, stu- like I can't believe you, James. Um, no, 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 yeah. no, no. Yeah, it's like, it's a tech thing under the skin. Like the, the dragons from Game of Thrones very famously just have T-Rex skulls under there. Hmm. Right. I'm so, playing the Chin Lee. Um, Swamp Ape has asked us, uh, hello Swamp Ape, and thank you for the super chat, that there's there's not been enough discourse since we got past the musical bit. That's Should true. Shrikes- should shrikes be considered modern raptors? Um, so I guess in the sense of like, should shrikes be considered raptors as birds of prey? Did we um, lose a purple dice? Uh, there should be four. I don't know where the fourth one is. I'll just clone one of these. Oh. I, I'm i going to be totally blunt. I've got no skin in the game. I, I don't engage with birds. <laughs> I don't associate with birds. And birding. Are... I'm not sure what people consider like the the definition of raptor to be if it's if it if it's supposed to be behavioral, phylogenetic, uh, kind of gross physiology, like is it a morpho type? I don't know. I thought I mean it's not a phylogenetic group because is it one of them is like one of the like either falcons or hawks is close to parrots right that's falcons yeah falcons are close to parrots and then like eagles and everybody else is is separate but they're all considered raptors so i would interpret this as a behavioral like bird of prey and bird yeah of bird uh, of prey. owls are also not confidently known or actually i they're just not raptors right or they're not in the bird of prey they're not considered raptors or they're not like they're not occipitr- they're up. not occipitromorphs Okay. Yeah. I'm going to spend... So, echoing Amelia, yeah. I think it's, it's solely... Yeah. It's a vibes-based assessment. It's what we would call in science a polyphyletic group. Uh, and five research. I think if... I think, sorry, Amelia, you go ahead. If, if the vibe is specifically non-fish vertebrate prey because i'm trying to think like then are penguins raptors like that's why i'm saying non-fish but then i'm thinking about like osprey and i would call those raptors i think it's vibes it's it's vibes and behavior 
I think it's also a little bit size and a little bit the way they hunt. And passerines are are quite small. Or I'm sorry, um, shrikes. shrikes are pretty small. And shrikes are passerines. I think it's an edge case. I they've got like falcony vibes a little bit, but they're kind of so weird. I don't know. I could see it either way. Yeah, I could too. I'm yeah. also publishing Tyrannodon with tracks. Ooh. Speaking of a raptor. Yeah, speaking of a raptor. <laughs> but and yeah, owls are strigiforms and strigiforms are not. Uh, what I was curious about is whether like strigiforms plus a cipitriforms form to clade, but um, they don't seem to. And yeah, I, I agree with Wildlife Wire. Uh, thank you. Uh, I think use of talons is an important part of it. Which ah. would mean that uh, Dromaeosaurs are raptors, which would be cool. Um, I'm going to go publish something. Um, and let's argue about whether we should call it a raptor or not. Oh. It's Deinonychus, everyone. Everyone clap. <laughs> and now I get my graduate student, right? Yeah. Great. Speaking of a raptor. Speaking of a raptor. I'm going to say that for everything that we published. Now. <laughs> speaking, speaking of a joke I just made. Um, Red Dead Redemption 2, but Micah is Satakasaurus and Arthur is James. <laughs> you know what? I mean, I, mod it. I want to see it. That's fine. That's good. You know what? <laughs> that is correct. One of the one of the things that we do know about Satakasaurus is that it hey, Scott, killed. A... Scott, one thing to just note: I think Kalani may still be watching the stream, and she has not yet finished Red Dead, so I'm not going to spoil any I'm, of Red Dead story. Here. I'm I'm not going Sorry. for an end spoiler. Okay, good, good, good. Um, I'm saying that we have fossil evidence showing that uh, it, on at least one occasion, a Satakasaurus was broken out of prison and killed an entire town to get its guns back. Oh. <laughs> That was the most <laughs> chilling mission in the game. I'm sorry. One of. That. I wouldn't say that was the most chilling, but. It's something about the way that the people inside the cabin, because you know how you don't, when Micah goes to get his guns, he goes inside a building you don't go into with him, and you yep. just hear the people screaming and then gunshots and he walks out. There was yep. something about that that really just. Oh, the turn rats on me. It, yeah, it really just did something to my brain and made me feel uncomfortable in a way that I didn't really for the rest of the game. Um, I think... Kicking you, James. You're kicking me? Oh, yeah. from the publishing Because I'm house. publishing. I see. <laughs> um, Paying three purple. Kyo, Kyo disaster. Two oh. white. Sorry, what are you going to publish? For Keoliophysis. Keoliophysis. And, uh, and I'm also paying... Um, Paying a green in addition to that, because it also has tracks. Um I don't I think you have to publish another one of the color of the specimen. Really? I don't think it can be just any color. Well, let me double check that. Okay. Oh well of the I same didn't... color as the specimen. Oh if, no. If that's I already broke the rule. Well then let's just modify the rule for this game so we don't have to like expose that. Okay, okay, that's okay. Because I yeah, I think I, I did it for for Ornithomimus as well. I think. Okay. Let's yes. moving forward. Let's yep. let's yep. do that. But yeah, okay. yeah. Cool. I just I saw three color. I was like, no, oh. it's a fair assumption. It's a it's it's a not a uh, it's a very yep. easy thing to think. Well, so. Dalton, while you're taking your turn, I'll read out the question then. Okay. Um, uh, from Kyo Kyo Disaster, um, wanted to send you love and a question. We accept both. Uh, assuming dinosaurs survive to the modern day. They did, if we're being pedantic. Do you think humans would have hunted them to extinction like Pleistocene megafaunas? Um, marine reptiles included. Uh, I'm going to give the incredibly not fun answer, and uh, there wouldn't be humans. Oh, Micah if is the turn rat. I'm sorry, that's a complete non sequitur to that. Yes, <laughs> I think uh, Scott's right, there wouldn't be people. Okay, but let's 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 for the sake of the question. I know. I'm trying I know. to not be fun on purpose. Um, I um, I mean I think the, the the unfun answer I have to give is some of them probably and some of them probably not. Like, you know, we probably could have, if not like domesticated some, at least like, you know, kept some around for providing some useful resource. Perhaps overhunted some. Perhaps you know tried to regulate the breeding of some. I I think 
I, I think the answer is some of them and some of them not. And like, I don't know. I, I think probably like T Rexes, if they were around, like, oh, they, it, it'd be a dragon. And so we would be afraid of them up until the point where we could kill them, and then we'd probably kill them all. Maybe not. Not oh, that that's yeah. like. I say that as if that's what happened to, to dragons. That is why real, we don't have dragons anymore. <laughs> it's that, what we. It's what would have happened. One of these was supposed to come from the museum. I'm sorry. Um. Okay, I went to the Blue Water Creek formation. I got some Triassic cubes and a, a Trace fossil, and we also got another erosion event. I thought, we're getting that really quickly. I it's only like. when I dig. Are you? Uh, did you? What are you going to do with it? <laughs> oh, I, I I went to the field. I took one of the okay. options. So I'll do the erosion. Event. That why? No, what are you going to do with it? <laughs> what are you doing with that erosion event there? I did watch Dragon's Double Fantasy erosioned Majors. up on a Tuesday evening. <laughs> Dragon's Hella Fantasy Sand. Real was a great documentary. It I was. Just wish I love that show. Had not convinced so many people that dragons existed. I had yeah, a long I... fight in middle school about it. Mm. Watch Hazard. Me too, um, honestly. Yeah, I, I think, have... I mean... Oh, I'm recalling. Go for it, Julian. I was just say I have the... Um... Actually, no, I'm not. Back in the day when Discovery would put out like you know sets of DVDs of things, yeah, I had I had that one and a couple others, but like that was the only one I watched. And I, I feel like I'm going insane, but I feel like it was also one that had like one of the making of bonuses back when like a DVDs existed, so that there were such thing as bonus features. Um, but yeah, that was I really liked it a lot. I had um, that's I think the only mod I ever had on for Zoo Tycoon is I had the dragons from. Oh the, wow! The show. Oh, it's and so good. They're so good. The um the prehistoric ones were great because they would run around like the birds with their wings out. Like I think they were modded on like the the secretary bird or something because they would like run around. It, they were so cute. I love them. Um, I was asked what which side of the argument I was on. Just to be very clear, I was uh, on the correct side that dragons did not once exist. <laughs> Um, the person I, have, I was arguing with was being remarkably shitty about it and was just like you don't understand you haven't seen the documentary which is I, I, my favorite just that's so funny it was like you, you just don't understand you haven't seen it that um, was it was like, like know, fighting with real, a flat earther yeah. some real pre-internet conspiracy like those just don't exist anymore I remember a bunch of those because like there was that there was the mermaid one that Discovery did yeah and I just remember every couple of years, like a dead thing on a beach was big news because no one knew what it was. And there was no Twitter for a scientist to immediately be like, it's just a dead whale. Like, or a basking just, shark. Or, a ba or whatever. Yeah. It's like, it's just a slightly Actually. decomposed coyote. Mm -hmm. Like, please stop. Sorry. I'm pulling yeah. my field assistant out <laughs> Matt, here because I need Matt to. Matt Hedron makes a good else. point that I, I do believe, and I, I think I, I remember this too, Matt, that at the Dragons one, it is fairly explicit that like, hey, like this is presented as a documentary, but this is like fictional and it's for fun. Yeah. Um, Whereas the Megalodon and the mermaid one that they've yeah. subsequently done were not. <laughs> are just lies. Are just lies that I, are, they frustrate me greatly because they couldn't just be fun if, 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 if everyone can be chill and also recognize that. Uh, Draco Masters asked if we've seen the Disney dinosaur concept art. I'm assuming you mean the stuff by like David Krentz, which I have seen. It's so good. It can can it's I ask so a good. question really quick? Yeah. yeah. Um, I have my paleontologist here at the museum collections. I uh -huh. did. I exchanged uh, fossils for fossil, and I exchanged a research thing. Uh -huh. um, can I do multiple fossils for fossils runs, or can I only do one? No, you can do as many as you want of either kind. Okay. Well, then I'm gonna do. I'm just gonna complete what I was doing there. Now, I, I think that they're referencing the the concept art by uh, Ricardo Delgado. Oh, yes. That's what I was thinking of. I, I yeah. thought David Krentz, but it's Delgado. And it's so cool. He was the guy who did uh, those comics that I'm forgetting the name of off the top of my head, right? Are they not Age of Reptiles? Uh, yeah, Age of Reptiles. I've got Age of the, Reptiles, um, yes. The omnibus of that. Oh, I, need to get a co I need to get an edition of that. I am interrupting to publish Ophthalmosaurus. Hot diggity... Dolmosaurus. <laughs> That's what I'm always saying. And that I've <laughs> I'm got always three, saying this. So yes. I get a student now, right? Yep. Okay. I'm withdrawing. I'm sending my. Hmm. 
give it a Yeah, year. and I mean, like, I, no knock on the Dragons documentary for, like, I mean, it did a good job of being like, this is this is fictional. But it is also impossible to make a piece of media like that that will not confuse people. Yeah. Uh, yep. That's not on the media. That's because uh, people are not as intelligent mm. as we like to think they are. Um, I think the line from Men in Black was, people are dumb, panicky, dangerous animals. And I have never heard... A more succinct <laughs> summarization of our group behavior. That or the um, James, the park ranger one about bears. Oh yeah, Substantial or bear-proofing overlap. trash cans. Yeah. Uh, let's see, chat. Do y'all know that story uh, about trying to update my... the? Um, no, I'm not pulling anyone. I refuse. The. Yeah, the Yosemite quote from park rangers trying to update the bear proof trash cans it's very good yeah if, a lot of people are saying yes oh, oh some people are saying they don't um where it was uh in yosemite they were trying to update the um the bear proof trash cans there because uh i forget if the initial problem was uh i, I think the initial problem was that bears were getting into them too easily and so they were trying to make it a bit more secure so bears couldn't get into it. And then people were finding it impossible to figure out how to open them. And there was, if memory serves, an anonymous park ranger that gave the quote uh, that said there is substantial overlap between uh, the smartest bear and the dumbest tourist. <laughs> it's That's so great. good. It also it does remind me of it, it. Isn't there that one like, um, like cooler company that bear proofs, um, their coolers and they have like a partnership with a local wildlife sanctuary, where they give the bears like their coolers with food in them as enrichment things to see if they can open them, to see if they pass. <laughs> And uh, a lot of the comments are, you you realize what this is doing. You are just training the bears to get smarter and smarter. <laughs> <laughs> You're making hyper intelligent they're, bears. It's the Bene Gesserit of bears. They have it, a breeding it, program where they're trying to produce the super bear. <laughs> it's, it's, it's the rise of the planet of the bears. <laughs> Spe uh, also, speaking of which, I'm so excited for the new planet of the apes. Oh, yeah. Oh, my God. Too. I'm so pumped. What a wonderful day. It's gonna be good for me in my monkey maxing era. <laughs> it, it's a it's a hot monkey summer. We got yeah. we got Kong. We got Planet of the Apes. We got Monkey Man. Yeah, I can't. I cannot wait to see Monkey Man. I I need to see that very soon. Yeah, we got I, I a question from Kyo Kyo Disaster, um, who asks on another note, "What is your thoughts on the evolutionary succession ideas of Walking with Dinosaurs and other documentaries? It's been generally criticized, but we'd like your uh, opinion on it." Um, I mean, my take is that it happened. That these yeah. are. These are things that we have observed in the in the record that they happened. Like now, I don't think it, and what I think people might take umbrage with, and what I don't think the shows really do, but I can see where the idea would come from, is that it's like a property of evolution that these things have to happen. No, oh, that literally wasn't a rule. Um, or that like these successions are like a baked in process. Or something. I don't know if I'm communicating it well, but like. I think it's 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 safe to and important to acknowledge that that like these kinds of successions did happen without ascribing necessarily any cause to them beyond even just random chance. Yeah, I mean like we've known for a long like this is the famous thing that Jack Jack Sapkowski, a paleobiologist discovered in the invertebrate or marine fossil record I should say, right? Is that like you can even just the ones broadly... that eat crayons? Thank you, Scott. Um, so awesome. Jack Sapkowski was a very, 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 very smart, uh, statistically minded paleontologist who did a lot of work with like broad scale evolutionary patterns. Uh, his famous quote was my field site is the library, which it's very, it's that Indiana meme. Jones, right? Where do you I work, work out? out? The library. <laughs> right. the li yeah. Where do you do field work? The library. And so he, did, he made this huge data set, which would have been very hard at the time. Remember, there weren't computers like this was, I think, published in the 80s. Right. So this is like yeah, so. hand tabulated occurrence data sets for like every genus going back to the Cambrian. 
And he was able to show with factor analysis that there were like three sets of faunas that tended to co-occur with each other at like these broad family levels. And oh, you can generally um, characterize like the the, th- the turnover of these marine faunas in the genesis of a modern biota. Yes. We need to pick our second uh, achievement thing. Sorry. Oh. Ooh. Well then. But yeah, like, we we do know that these things happened. Um, I am, by the way, bumping Amelia, and I'm going to publish something. With four purple cubes and two research cubes, I am publishing the Thalatosaur Gunaketit. Oh. Uh, preserved with a copper light. Oh, wow. Uh, James, you can't publish copper lights with marine reptiles. Oh, I can't. Well, then, never mind. the The big no symbol over the marine reptiles might be a clue. <laughs> that w- might be a clue. I'm gonna take back marine one of reptiles. My don't cubes. poop. They're like, <laughs> they're like girls. They don't poop. Yeah. <laughs> um, sorry, sorry to to burst your bubble there. That's okay. Um, um, uh, Swamp babe, please say hi to the wife. And we've got two yes, super chats that we'll up. talk about soon. But and I'm gonna turn this over to Amelia. But yeah, like the the succession of faunas happened, and I think that as much as we want to talk about the fact that different organisms are going to be well adapted to their environment. We do also know there have just generally been acquisitions of abilities that other things previously did not have like super Mm -hmm. fine resolution or broad spectrum hearing in mammals. Like that's a thing. Like that's an innovation of us. We know that most reptiles um, and like every non avian dinosaur we've studied, they don't have the adaptations in the inner ear for super fine discrimination of uh, sound frequencies and hearing a huge range of sound frequencies. So from that, we can also say like, there are some general trends that do hold, right? Like the rise of warm blooded animals over cold blooded animals is, is like a pretty unambiguous thing that happened. So I agree with Dalton, like they happened. It's not like a, it's not a preordained thing, but it, it, it does occur. YouTube is also telling me that we have dipped to two consecutive viewers, but I think that that's not true. <laughs> two watching now. That, yeah, I don't. I think that's wrong. Um, but thanks to the two people watching the viewers. If there are yeah, two people watching. in watching right now, both of you comment. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Wildlife Wire added a, an addendum to that, which is just that it says, they say one issue that can happen, though, is the idea that two species can't overlap or partition at all. A famous example they'll cover eventually is the myth that tigers exclude wolves. That's definitely true, and and. I, I don't think the shows ad, like advocate for that in, t- in terms of like what the question that was asked, but it is very important, very, very important to remember for people who study paleontology that similar animals can coexist um, yes. <laughs> in close proximity to one another. They, they can. Watch um, the space. M- yeah, watch the space. More on that later. Uh, I, I'm actually amazed at how widespread the assumption is in paleontology. But we'll talk about yeah. that later. Um, yes, but Ryan, Ryan Howe uh, gave us a super chat. Thank you very much. Uh, asking, in the Sinsao, or Qingdao Soros, I should say it correctly. Even though we now that we've been video, corrected. Yeah. There were plenty of um, key jokes. <laughs> yes, there <laughs> were. Key jokes. There Based on that and other things, this channel gave me the impression that paleontology have a history of having edgelords. Is that accurate? Yes. Um, <laughs> <laughs> It's more so I think that like paleontology, I remember when I was applying to grad school or looking to, when I went to my first SVP, there was a, a table in the student round table area of like applying to grad school. And what, the person there gave the advice that like paleontology is one of the few sciences that has fans. And when you're trying to like get into the field, you have to distinguish that you're not just a fan. Um, James, I'm bumping you. Okay. Uh, and then I have lost myself. Uh, where's my paleontologist? Where'd he go? I'm sorry. Oh. I can only coexist in close proximity to your mom, for example. <laughs> um, it's just that you have to like communicate that you. Adam Wallace, don't keep that up. We we can't have fans be funnier than us. Sorry, <laughs> sorry, Dalton. Please continue. It's okay. Um, and so their their edge lords often come in in that aspect of like people who are very into the field. Um, even kind of tangentially, can can make that happen. Um. But there have certainly been been people in the field too who you might consider an, an edge lord. It's it's been known to happen. I've published Lambiosaurus. Oh, 
Well, that's fun. Um, let's see. Um, well, I'll go to Dino Dom's question after this. So Dino Dom asked, um, are you guys going to review, uh, do a review of Bloodlines Agate when they, when it releases in June or July? And also thanked me for giving him a tour around the Harvard Museum. Oh, You're welcome. Well, way to brag. <laughs> yeah. Only two of the skeleton crew have gotten that pleasure. Um, That's true. But uh, I would I would love to do a review of Agate. Um, has, it, has anybody else been to Agate? No. Isn't Ugh. it Agate? Scott, I've bumped your field assistant, by the way. Sure. I, I That's an honest question. I'm not trying to be clever. Oh, I thought you were um, actually. No, me. I, I uh, don't I've always, know. I've always said Agate. I, 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 I have more that, commonly heard that Agate. Might just, but... That might just be an accent thing. Looks Here, really cool. Here's the Kirtland formation, which I'm not playing. And what I'm playing is the secret. No, Draco Master, it's explicitly not Agate. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I have I have only ever heard Agate. I have now heard Agate, but I, yeah, I've never heard Agate. Agate. I like Agate though. And I can re-roll these two that came up as museum. And I got six. Six Cretaceous cubes. Agatha. Forgotten um, Bloodlines, Agatha. Agatha Christie. And Amelia, you can start going while I pull my We cubes. had a, a question. Trying. Oh, so, uh, Connor uh, Walsingham asks, is there any dinosaur that was maybe poisonous? Um, and we don't have any evidence of that right now. There aren't, Isn't there like a bird that's... Been, that's Th there's well, a couple poisonous birds. There are some poisonous birds in the sense of like poisonous that if you consume them you they will do you harm right they're not like venomous birds N no i don't know so. there's no venomous birds um and there there is there's no evidence for any poisonous or venomous dinosaurs there was the the kind of proposal me. yeah that uh was it soror it was no, cynornithosaurus no, yeah cynornithosaurus um was proposed at one point to to maybe be venomous um based on some erroneous interpretations of what, what the teeth looked like. Yeah. That was actually... Uh, no, I can't tell the story. But uh, in, a, in a manuscript I did not wind up publishing for various reasons, I did also just kind of comment on the fact that dromaeosaur teeth in general slip out of their sockets when they decompose. So they tend to look long. And the idea that long Simon the Mythosaurus had very long teeth for venom delivery doesn't really have a lot going for it. You know what else had long teeth? Ceratosaurus. Ooh. Oh, look at nice. that. Nice. Well done. Now, what, what am I going to do? What am I going to do here? I'm going to go to Yeah, Komodos are also that. just venomous. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The, the Komodo thing from... Uh, Jurassic Fight Club with T-Rex having a toxic bite. You don't need to have a toxic bite if you can vaporize uh, the atmosphere. I, I love that everybody's like, how would T-Rex kill things? I'm like, I don't know, maybe by biting bite hard. through them. <laughs> no, it, it, remember, it vaporized the atmosphere. Right, it would ignite the atmosphere. <laughs> uh, speaking, speaking of Komodos, I, I've been, yesterday and today, I spent a lot of time in the extant herpetology collections looking at monitor lizard skeletons for my dissertation stuff and today just to like get a break from the teeny tiny lizard skulls because most of them are teeny tiny compared to what i'm used to working with i peeked into the the cabinet of komodo dragons and there's one skull that has replacement teeth like four or five layers deep awesome. it looks like a shark it is so horrible like i could not handle that i i did not want to look at that one longer um they're pretty cool. They're so cool. I was reminded how cool they are. Like, before I saw that one, which, like, freaked me out, I didn't want to look at it anymore, but, like, I've been dealing with these little crispy, greasy, yellow skulls, because most small lizards, when you start save the skeleton, they tend to get greasy and crispy and yellow. Um, Same. 
<laughs> but the Komodos were not. They looked like most of them. One of them, I am not looking forward to handling because it is visibly damp. Are, are you talking uh, about the green? Uh, one? The what? One of them is like green in AMNA and I haven't seen. I haven't seen the green one. I only looked in the bottom cabinet. I think there's more in the upper cabinet. Yeah. No, this is the this is the big one that's like just loose in a drawer because it's I huge. See. Mm. Um, which I'm gonna have to ask herpetology staff if they're going if they have anything to help me like lay the whole thing out to try and get a measurement, like a length measurement. Mm. Right. I, so Ryan Howe just asked uh, or just just said there are plenty of lar other large theropods that have a weaker bite force than T. Rex. Uh, they would benefit oh, and Amelia, from a Komodo bite, um, and. I'll it far be it for me to overstep and talk about theropods when Jimbo's here, but um, I'll say that like there's a lot of predatory mammals today that have a bite force that's less than a hyena, and they don't need venom to kill their prey. Mm -hmm. well, well, yeah, I was gonna say they had enough. Yeah, they had a like, mouth and full of sixty doubly serrated teeth. I think they're yeah bad. the like. It, it, it really is sorry, it, Dalton. You no, no, you, no. I was just, like the I, like the Komodo bite thing really does come from the misunderstanding that 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 people at one point thought that the venom of Komodo dragons was they they, they weren't venomous, but that they had mouths that were full of of bacteria because they were eating rotten meat, and that when they would bite things, it would infect the wound. And like to my knowledge, that just isn't really something that's physiologically going to happen in most things. Like the mouth is for the most part like not designed to harbor very like dangerous bacteria because it'd be very easy for said bacteria to infect you infect the the user of the mouth um to interrupt then... briefly i published a pterosaur called oh. nisodactylus the island finger oh hmm. that's is that that's the cuban one i think oh very cool it's illegal to have that in the u.s it is <laughs> Um, the other comment I want, because I think they were asking if, like, if any small dinosaurs smaller than T-Rex might have had a bite, a venomous bite, like, with Komodos and other venomous lizards that are not snakes, like, you can still see the venom groove on the tooth. So there's a specialized mm -hmm. channel in the tooth that helps the venom get to be, get to where it's supposed to be going, which is how we know, like, which of the fossil lizards were venomous. So, like, things like Astesia also have that groove it's also why we know that mosasaurs probably were not venomous because they do not have that groove running along the side which seems to be a pretty good indicator of whether or not something was venomous mm -hmm. you heard it here folks amelia zilo mosasaur specialist the mosasaurs were not groovy so Adamolos, there we go thank you for the super chat <laughs> um uh very very uh disappointing to hear about the internships but you know yes um I will tell you the same thing happened to me with not only summer internships, but my first time applying to grad school in paleontology. So uh, don't let that discourage you. Uh, it happens to all of us to some degree or another. And Absolutely. Uh, you, you will get your chance. Uh, to tell a little fun story about me, um, I uh, applied to a park ranger interpreter position at Dinosaur National Monument um, before I applied for the AMNH position. And basically the requirements for that job are wear a dorky hat and talk at people about dinosaurs. <laughs> and oh my I've God, been we're perfectly qualified. I've been practicing for that job yeah. <laughs> for my whole life. Um, and so I, uh, well, I was rejected for that. Um, and it was, uh, it was very funny that I got the rejection email for that the day I was having my going away party for the AMNH. Oh, wow. Um, and my mentor from Michigan said that I should wait to respond to it until after I have my AMNH email and then say a butter opportunity came up. <laughs> um, that would be, that would be very funny. It would have been very fun. I, I remember uh, when I was doing my college applications, um, I, it was kind of, it, so I got into many of the schools I applied to, which was very nice. 
And I wound up going to Brown University, but I had gotten into like UChicago and Columbia as well. And between getting the emails of acceptance for Columbia and UChicago, I got an email from UW-Madison that was just like, yeah, we're not taking you. And I was like, listen, no knock on UW-Madison. It's an excellent school. But I was like, this what it was you a very do? Fun, I don't know. That's so funny. It was really like, fun. like, it's a good, it's a very good Public yeah, school. but like, like yeah, it's not. I it, haven't no heard of anyone about. being rejected from UW Oof. Madison. <laughs> I, I think we followed up later, and I think they might not have gotten my letters of rec or something. Like mm. it was something. I think it was something procedural, but it was just very funny. I was like, oh my god, I got into one of my dream schools. Ah, oh, damn, I didn't get into UW Madison. Oh my god, I got into another dream school. It was fun. I'm yeah. recalling my people. Um. Yeah, I will. Say, to the note of Venom, um, one thing I'll just bring up is that there is. Beyond, like, in Lizards that, uh, that that Amelia mentioned, there is a possible venomous archosauromorph or something on that side of the reptile tree called Wichitidon from the Triassic. There are teeth that we find that have very well-developed venom grooves. And sometimes they are found in chunks of, of jaw that have a very archosaurian um, kind of ilk to them. But that's all that's ever been found are teeth and chunks of jaw. So we're still waiting to find the rest of Wichitidon to figure out what it is. Um, but there's to something venomous in the Triassic. To interrupt with a game thing. Mm -hmm. um, when I go to the specimen zone. Yes. And I dig through the trash. You can take from the top of the trash. I can take from the top of the trash. Yeah, you just take one from the top of the trash. Unless you get this um, the the specimen dog. anyone from uh, bonus. That lets you take from anywhere in the trash. Otherwise, you can only take the top. Okay, that's fine. I like the thing on the top. I'll take that. There you go. Um, we did get yeah we currently have one viewer according to my dashboard so thank you everyone thank you apparently all one of dedicated viewer. Out, everyone's uh like subscribe the subscriptions are gone so that's huh. cool i bet we're never going to get the super chats from this <laughs> uh, it's womp definitely womp. not going to happen womp, womp, womp. Yeah. um we we had a question that i wanted to address but now we have a from draco master thank you for the super chat mm -hmm. Um, boosting dinosaurs and Moore's question, what are our favorite prehistoric kingdom creatures? Mm. Um, mine is the Parasaurolophus. I think it's beautifully done, and I love the sound design. Oh, it's hard to say. I... Man, it's it's so... It, the Parasaurolophus is up there. I think it, it might also be, for me, Spinosaurus, because I think it is, like, the canon depiction mm. of that animal now. Oh, it's it's um, beautifully done. It's so pretty. Yeah, it's so good. I'm I'm just gonna look to make sure I don't forget anything. I'm, I'm uh, recalling. The, the oh yeah, I need, I need I need to look at the roster um, as well. They're all so good. I I think my favorites from Prehistoric Kingdom. I I don't know if I can pick one, but I'll pick two. I'll narrow it down to two, and they are Torvosaurus and Spinosaurus. Oh, Torvo. Because Torvosaurus has some beautiful skins. And Spinosaurus, the one, I don't forget which name of it is, or which name of it is. I forget which skin it is. But one of the Spinosaurus skins is my, like, is, yeah, as Scott said, it's it's the canonical Spinosaurus. That's just what it was. They figured it out. They got it. Yeah. Dilophosaurus is amazing, too. There's no bad ones. Genuinely, like... Uh, the only thing that I would say comes close to it, um, and it, it isn't even bad, it's just I, and not even in the meme way, I just want to talk, um, <laughs> is I I don't know what's up with their Aranosaurus, Um, because they depict it as, like, very bipedal, and that is a depiction of Aranosaurus I haven't seen a lot. Um... And because they're so accurate with everything else in the game, it's genuinely making me wonder if they have access to information that I don't know about. Um, and it, it's a testament to the game that when I see an animal, a depiction of an animal in this game that I don't 100% agree with, my gut reaction isn't they got it wrong. It's, pro it's that, oh, they might not, they might know something I don't. Yeah. Um, speaking of Parasaurolophus, which was mentioned for this, I am publishing Parasaurolophus right now. Oh. Um, and also, Amelia, is your time to draw a new personal, to add to your personal objective um, thing? 
Okay, so like, I just I just draw a new draw one. Draw from this left pile. From the um, left pile. Yep, and just draw one, and that's that's now your second objective that you can work for to get more points. Okay. Wait, I thought there had to be a detriment to this too. Well, the detriment in my mind is that there you don't have any choice about what you get. So it's possible that it will synergize with what you've been doing, or it's possible that it's gonna be the opposite, and then you're they'll have to like figure out like you'll have to balance how much of this extra bonus you want to and even can get yeah fair point okay it's not perfect it, yeah. it, it was i think the last one i thought of yeah i mean i it, it, i think it'll if amelia wins by a landslide uh well we I will right. evaluate it. yeah <laughs> Also, um, prehistoric kingdom's triceratops is probably the canonical triceratops to me. It's I was about to so say, looking pretty. at the um, the roster, I like the triceratops a lot, um, and I also like the the um, kark. kark. Kark's great. Yeah, it's got the stupid like concerned eyebrow thing that they have. It's time for everyone to pick their new achievement um, thing. Oh yes. Wait, a new achievement thing? Uh the new tile your extra bonus milestone. Oh, I see. What do I want though? Is the, is the question. What do I want? I take that one. All right. Uh, I am going to do something. No. Super cat uh, super cat. Super chat rather. Yes. Yeah, <laughs> from Ryan Howe. Fun fact. Crichton made the Dilophosaurus in Jurassic Park novel spit venom because he thought the real creature wasn't that threatening. So when they adapted it in the movie, Spielberg shrunk it. I thought it was shrunk to avoid confusion with Velociraptor. That I think that was my understanding. Uh, another, yeah, it's, I mean, things often happen for more than one reason. But yeah, I think... <laughs> well, yes, yes. One of them is definitely to make it not uh, confused with the raptor. That's that's me being very paleontologist of myself. Of everything can only have one and only one explanation. Ah, yes, you get it now. Um, Never let anybody, and particularly Alex, say that I'm not a paleontologist. <laughs> um, can I ask a gameplay question? No. Yes. I took the specimen plus one thing here. Does that mean uh -huh. I draw one more and have to discard another one, or that it I? It means. It means you have the choice. You can you can draw one additional to what you should be doing, or you can not. Okay. And you can you can discard an additional one to whatever you were going to discard, or you cannot. Oh. Okay. I'm switching this up then. Um, James, you also you wanted to address an, another question earlier that I think got buried. I did. Well, it was more I wanted to talk about the venom groove thing. Part of the Cynonithosaurus is venomous paper was predicated on the idea that there were like venom grooves on the teeth um and they're not uh what happens in theropod teeth generally speaking birds uh, primitive birds replace their teeth differently but theropods uh have the new tooth grow in on the lateral side of the old tooth and it kind of absorbs the root and at, or i'm sorry on the medial side and as the tooth is erupting it kind of erodes the lateral the lingual surface of the tooth and so the tooth that's in place while the new tooth is growing in gets this kind of wasted appearance where there's a groove on one side because the new tooth is actually eroding the tooth and causing it to um, to remodel. That's why we thought there was a venom groove on Sinonithosaurus. It's like a pretty common thing for theropod teeth to have this figure eight cross section just because of that sort of uh, tooth replacement. So that that's it. Um, I need to choose which of these I'm discarding and then I will pass it on yeah oh, I'll, Darts. I'll also Darts. say uh a dino dom on your thing uh like it with uh on the mammoths there i'm actually like one of the biggest things that i'm surprised about in when it comes to prehistoric kingdom is that they had and, and seem to have kind of like switched up on it because it was kind of needlessly confusing that system where like you could like different skins were like uh, the different species and they were all like huddled under there and now they've kind of separated all of them out because they're just like, it, it makes it, I think it's partially that it makes it look more impressive and it's also that like they treat them fully, fully as different species and you only find them at different dig sites and stuff. I find it so surprising that we get three species of 
Mammothus or, or three skins of Mammothus primogenius instead of giving us a woolly mammoth, a Colombian mammoth, and one of the dwarf mammoths. Mm-hmm. Because if you were, if you told me it was like, hey, we can have three species, we can have three skins and have them all be different species, that's what I would do. Because those seem to be, at least for me, the most interesting of the mammoths. Yeah. Um, yeah, I think that's I fair. Agree. There was a question um, from Kaiju fan who's heading out, but had a final question: of What are thoughts on the What are our thoughts on the creatures in Path of Titans? I think they're okay. I also think they're okay. I think some of them are really good, and they they vary, right? Like, yeah, that new skin that they did for Eo Triceratops is stunning. Um, so we, we were sharing that around in the in the Twitter a little while ago, and it's yeah. gorgeous. Some are great, some are okay, and some are like weird dragons <laughs> that I always have to download every time. I play Path of Titans. Uh, Path of Titans is like the ultimate monkey's paw. It's like I wish we had a dinosaur game that made everybody on stream really excited that we could play with people during fundraisers. And then it's you have to download every fantasy creature possible so that you can play as a dinosaur. Mm-hmm. Also, Swamp Ape. Enjoy Helldivers 2. That's the game I wish I were playing right now. <laughs> I'll, I'll take no holotype slander. I'm publishing something. No, I mean, I like for? holotype. I, it, it's not slander. <laughs> I just, I do really like Helldivers 2. Helldivers is great. Three purple. Uh, uh, uh. Oh, Ooh, good for you. Scott. Scott's got like just a menagerie of things. I'm building. I have an island. <laughs> um, And uh, are, are we. Con- are we continuing our house rule, or are we, or our our screw I, up of how no I think from work okay from now on from now on all right we should follow the rule but all right so I played Tawa cool Tawa's a cool cool critter yeah it is <laughs> I this <laughs> AJ the sleepy I just finished Song of Achilles. I think the book might have been gay. <laughs> uh, oh, oh yeah. That's great. Yeah, it is. I <laughs> let me just gush about Song of Achilles for a second because I I love that book so much. Um I remember when I first started reading it, um I was listening to the audiobook because I canonically cannot read. Um <laughs> and I was I was doing some chores around my apartment and uh, if you've read Song of Achilles, uh, you'll you'll know that it's it starts out being unclear about who the POV character is, and I apologize for spoilers. So if you don't want spoilers for a really really good book, um, I guess mute until I put my hand down. Yeah. Um, I'm, by the way, I'm going to the Kayanta Formation. Okay. Um, but I also drew an erosion event, so we'll deal with that afterward. I, I okay. think it's because I draw more being a small institution um, oh, that, that well we're getting be. them so much. But mm. anyway, I'm going to roll this shit first. Okay, well, I'll say um, there is, like, there's a, a reveal early in the book when you find out that the, um, the POV character is Patroclus. And being someone who knows how the Iliad goes, it was like, oh, oh, this is going to break my soul. And I I was full, full crying. I'm happy it was the audiobook because I, I could put my hand down. I'm happy it was the audiobook because um, I would not have been able to read those pages with all of the tears. Uh, it was so great. And I'm kind of sad I read Cersei afterwards because it was nowhere near as good. You see, I have not actually read Song of Achilles yet, but I also am okay with being spoiled for it, so it's okay, Scott. I also oh, we do know, like, James. I, I, yeah, well, it's fine. Again, it's it's fine. I, I, deal, I, I deal with it okay. Um, I do find it funny that everybody in chat is roasting you for spoiling a 1,000 or a several thousand year old story. Uh, I, I really like the descriptor once of um, that the Iliad is Troy story and the Odyssey is Troy story too. Just, I hate that. that that just made me that just made me <laughs> chuckle. Um, yeah, I the only thing I think of now when I hear Song of Achilles though is the the screen grab of the one line from it, like he had skinned the color of freshly pressed olive oil. 
because Madeline Miller, who is an excellent author, apparently doesn't know that freshly pressed olive oil is not like a beautiful tan color, but it's bright green. <laughs> <laughs> he was Shrek. It was exactly. Oh my God. Cer- Cersei, I thought was great. I, no, I it, love Cersei. It, I it's, it, on, it, it is not over. bad. Yeah. yeah, it is not bad by any stretch of the imagination. It's just, it's not as good as Song of Achilles, which is like, uh, let me let me put it this way. It's it's like I was a big fan of, um, oh, just a second. I, I'm, I'm going to screw up names. Uh, I'm I'm a big fan of Ryan Coogler, and um, I, I I forgot his last name for a bit. Uh, and I'm absolutely, a big fan of Ryan. <laughs> Ryan. I, I had Hooper in my head for the, for there, but I'm a big fan of Ryan Coogler's work of Fruitvale Station and Creed are amazing, amazing movies. And then when I watched Black Panther, I was like, wow, this isn't as good as Fruitvale Station and Creed. And then I was disappointed by it for a minute. And it was just like, oh, that's unfair because that is such a different movie. <laughs> but yeah, it, it's similar to that. It's it's a very good book. I would highly recommend it. Um, but it's just, it's, it's not as good as Song of Achilles, in my opinion. Um, let's see. What am I gonna do? While Scott takes his turn, we had a question from Kyo Kyo Disaster who asks, um, random question, why do you think there was the trend in paleo art slash media to pronate the wrists of the animals? Uh, I think that was just misunderstanding, right? Yeah, I think it's just genuinely. Kind of people mm-hmm. thought that I think it just makes doing. sense when, when well, we... It's what lizards do. Like, when lizards walk, they're lifting their feet. They're not running like birds, like, holding their hands out like that. So, like, if you're trying to depict a large reptile, and most people don't think of birds as reptiles, like, think about a lizard walking. They're kind of folding their hands when they take their steps. Yeah, and I mean, like, the, the forelimb posture is just, like, it's hard to reconstruct if you don't know it also in dinosaurs, because, like, the bones are so non-congruent. It's, like, it, it's hard. to It's hard to figure them out in isolation. And, the, you know, you, it takes a lot of practice. Um, so we are, yeah, it, it's, a, it's a difficult thing. I also think that something that people were missing is like lizards do have some development of a rotary joint in the forearm yeah, so that they can plant the hand on the ground. And I think people were just maybe not understanding that you need that. Like, I remember the first time I looked at a Komodo dragon skeleton, I was floored to see like a real big rotary head of the radius. Like, kind of like what a mammal has. Um, but dinosaurs never really had that. So I think it's just something that they didn't really figure out. I think it was like the semi-lunate carpal, really, right? Like recognition yeah. of that kind mm-hmm. of locking mechanism that made people realize that they were um, that they were holding yeah, their I hands think so. like a bird. And it is my turn, I see. It is your turn. Mm. Your turn indeed. Ooh, mm. I can answer. Uh, ooh, Dino ooh, Dom ooh. had a just quick question for me. Don't you dare. <laughs> um a uh, quick question for Scott uh who drew your profile picture that would be uh Mr. Andy Dinosaur Comics Cruz um he's one of my very good friends um if you follow Dinosaur Comics on uh Instagram uh you will see a lot of his really awesome work and I've I, I even authored a couple of the comics especially the Utah Raptor one and I um wrote a book with him um, a while ago, of it's the did you know d- do you know Dino Hell Creek? I'm one of the paleontological consult consult consultants. On He's that. one of the consultants. I am, I am one the of the consult. consult. All right, I did um, my turn. I did uh, research lab things. Cool. There is a very cool post on Twitter that I just saw that someone in their bathroom has like travertine um, walls, and there's a cross section of a hominid jaw. In their wall. What? That's so cool. I saw it too. Yeah. I did not see this. It's in the Zoom, Scott. I don't know if you can see it. Oh my god! That's so rad. Yeah. It's amazing. I saw somebody has already made a Twitter thread. Like, what to do when you find a hominid specimen in your wall? 
<laughs> Enjoy it. Yeah. They're yeah. in the goddamn walls. <laughs> Any encounters with contaminated or dangerous specimens? That's a good question, Kevin. Uh, I have <laughs> yes. worked a lot on two medicine formation stuff, and that is that is pretty hot. Uh, and I don't like to think about it. Yeah. We we did a really cool tour of the... Um, mm. was, it, was, it the was it the ROM? It was the ROM. Was the, ROM. Yeah. Yeah. the ROM's collections facilities, where they have special cabinets... For all their like Morrison and, and other hot material, and a special prep station. For yeah, and a special it too, prep station, which was very with special cool. PPE. Um, yeah, we don't have. That. I've never seen another museum that has that. Yeah, um, I will say I've also encountered, um, I guess, in the spirit of it, infested stuff. Uh, there was one time at the AMNH when we opened a box of fossils from Mongolia and they were wrapped up in a camel hair blanket and uh it wasn't just camel hair that was in there uh I'm just gonna take my three that I could actually hold uh there was a lot of moths that exploded oh, out wow. of there when when we opened that and that was a bad day that's cool we had to, we had to work at that for a while that was a, that was awful Bumping your paleontologist, Scott. I'm going to I say, had, complete a global it, objective. It wasn't actually infected, but I thought it was. It was in in the AMNH collections. We have a couple Ice Age mummies, and I sometimes like to peruse collections and look for cool things because why not? Um, and I saw this cabinet labeled, you know, Bison Baby Mummy. I'm like, oh, and I opened it up. And I looked, I, and you know, it looks kind of crispy, but then it's got like these huge green fuzzy looking spots on it. I was like, oh no. And I closed the cabinet and I texted Carl, our collections manager. I'm like, hey, is there, is that mold on the bison mummy? He's like, oh no, no. It's a special kind of mineral that, that grows on the Alaskan mummies huh. that looks, it's, it's exactly that blue green. And it is kind of fuzzy looking because it's like a little crystal. I can't remember what he called it, but he's like, no, no, I understand. But I'm like, Okay, good, because I thought I'd exposed myself to a virus. <laughs> Amelia, you're up, by the way. Okay. Yeah. Gross. Yeah, it, it yeah. was really gross. Mop it up. Okay, wait. Oh, I gotta. Who, whoever is off, I'm going or on there. I'm gonna kick. I gotta publish. Uh, would it be possible for a prehistoric animal to be nearly, if not entirely, imperceptible to us because they're colored in a spectrum or color that we cannot perceive? Um, probably not, unless there's so. a lot of animals that are colored in ways we can't perceive. But um, most um, most vertebrates, I believe, except for mammals, can see ultraviolet light. So mm -hmm. there's a lot of... Um, there's a lot of coloration that we don't perceive right now. Like the world and other right. animals look fundamentally different for birds, reptiles, amphibians, and fish. And insects. Yeah. Yeah, yeah they'd have to be like made a of Triassic bird. thing. Ooh, Chindisaurus. Yeah. Oh, uh, wildlife wire. I'll have Forces to chindi. run that by. Um, I get lunch with one of our malologists every single day um, said that uh, most of the recently killed wolves in New England are in the mammal collection at Harvard. Yeah, I'll have to ask Madeline about that. She's working her way through the antelocaprids at the moment, and I want you guys to know that I have a friend who makes works, worse jokes than I do um, because, well, one, uh, I run a YouTube channel with four of them. Now, um, uh, <laughs> That she came to lunch today and she was just like, I, I want a heist movie where uh, it's it involves pronghorns to some degree and it's called The Great Antilla Caper. And uh, I tried not to talk with her for the rest of lunch. <laughs> oh my god. I love Madeline. <laughs> I love Madeline. She's great. I published publish? Centrosaurus. Oh. Oh. With Amber. I'm going to go 
to. Ah, ah, ah. Uh, I'm gonna go to stop. What, what just the field? What was that? Uh, <laughs> everything's oogly boo. He's fucking um, this is referencing nice. the new episode of Smiling Friends. Oh, okay. I'm going to the Chinle. <laughs> oh, bye, short Brontothir. Oh, bye. Thanks bye. for coming. There's a question about whether it's possible that at least one species of Mosasaur was venomous. The answer is yeah, it's possible. Um, the group of lizards that they belong to, regardless of if they're snakes or, or monitors, is ancestrally venomous. Um, so it's possible. I mean, that we just haven't found it, or maybe, maybe like the Aegialosaurs. Maybe, maybe they were upland. No, um, <laughs> upstream. Uh, no, yeah. like if I if I had to guess, it would have been. It's probably one of the tiny ones or the early ones. Not necessarily because they're tiny, but just because like maybe they were doing a typical, you know, monitor type thing. Um, but uh, those fossils are they're in a slab, so you can only see the teeth from one side. Uh, of the egg yalosaurs, and I don't think it's on the groove is on both sides, but I could be wrong. Um, but to my knowledge, we don't know of any, but I think theoretically, yeah, possible, absolutely. I am publishing Lepidus. Lepidus, oh, fascinating! <laughs> Very cool, James. <laughs> fascinating. I um, like that that's the etymology, but it just makes it seem like flavor text yeah. from a, like fascinating. <laughs> oh, Lep uh, my, oh Lepidus. I can't see it. Hmm. I thought we were just making a joke that James put the card upside down. It just looks like it's upside down to me. Oh, that's weird. Huh. No, it's right side up for me. Yeah, that's <laughs> right. Huh. That's great. Um, the, there's a question about confirmed freshwater mosasaurs. Yes, there's one that was found in a freshwater environment that was Pananiosaurus. Um... And we're pretty sure that the seaway ones were every now and then taking a jaunt up river. Um, so that's the uh, the Hell Creek mosasaur, presumably. Mm. Might have. It was in it. I can't remember if it was. It wasn't found in freshwater, I don't think, but it might have been brackish or something. But like when you do, when people have done like chemical, uh, what is it, isotope analyses of the teeth, it, they found that they mm. were, a lot of mosasaurs were like regularly in in fresh water whether that means like they were drinking rainwater or just going up river to drink or whatever um yeah so they were they were absolutely venturing i wish we had more of them because i know they were there like there's nothing stopping them um besides being but, bunker sized besides being huge yeah i'm thinking like the the more reasonably sized ones that are like crocodile size like there's no reason those animals weren't all up in the streams um you know, but the only one that's for sure confirmed is Pananiosaurus. Yeah. Huh. Amelia, it's your turn, but... Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, 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 that wasn't... I'm sorry. I, I'm i just also trying to read comments, and so I, my brain is now split down both ends. It's interesting that you don't find more of them. I know, yeah. right? Like, that's... Yeah. And that's, like, a project that I wanted to take on that I never did that I probably just won't have time for is we have in, in the m &H, there's like drawers and drawers and drawers of these um, teeny tiny squamate fossils mm. and I told myself that one day I want to just go through all of them and mm -hmm. see if there's a mosasaur hiding in there like te like micro fossils teeny tiny little things like the size of a normal lizard and like every time we go every time I go um, to the Hell Creek with the uh, Carthage crew. Like, I, I pay extra attention to the tiny, tiny weird bones and tiny weird teeth. Um, couple, a couple false alarms. We've had a couple teeth that we were suspicious about, but they turned out to be crocs. Um, but I, yeah, I'm, I am surprised there aren't more of them. Yeah, I mean, it does seem like something they would do. Mm-hmm. Like I said, I mean, nothing, especially like, like Cladastes, like what's stopping Cladastes? It's tiny. Mm -hmm. And besides, as it was pointed out by AJ the Sleepy, uh, besides, of course, Nessie, um, right. we do have freshwater please resource. Right. Have there, 
Has there been any freshwater ichthyosaurs? Not to my knowledge. I don't know. Hmm. Yeah, not to mine either. Huh. Who can say? Hmm. Where the wind blows. Any time. Oh, the stream is great having a bad time in Helldivers. Sorry to hear that, Swamp. Oh. <laughs> we had a bad time in Helldivers last night. Oh, my God. Night. Last rough, night? Oh, my dive. God. We were uh, obliterated. The dive was hell. Mm -hmm. um, Freshwater pliosaurs, I don't think, make sense, uh, given what we assume the for their... For their uh, Ecology? Ecology. That's how I always say it. <laughs> Dalton is yours. Hot diggity oh. dog. Okay, wait a minute. Kevin Prem is asking if there's updates on the Carthage situation. Um, for those of you unaware, Carthage is basically trying to get rid of its paleontology program. Um, there are no updates. Currently. Against their will. Against, no, not against, well, against the will of the paleontologist, yes. Yes, but Carthage yes. very much wants us gone. No, uh, no, I, I'm, I'm just saying it isn't like, this isn't a mutual decision of just like, oh, we shouldn't have one. No, no, no. This is like to, to make a short, a uh, long story short, um, in 2020, they let go our preparator. Um, the paleo program consists of two people, our preparator and our professor, Dr. Carr. Um, they have very different roles. Um, Sites is a preparator, so she does all of our field stuff, all of our fossil prep. And she's also basically our collections manager at the museum downtown versus uh, Dr. Carr does the academic stuff. So he teaches the classes at the college and mentors us and all of that. The two of them together run the field expedition, but Seitz is really the one, Dr. Seitz is our preparator. Uh, she's really the one that handles like the collection side of thing and obviously prep and all of that. Um, so Carthage let her go. She was employed by the college in 2020. Uh, we spoke to the administrators about it because we wanted to know if perhaps we could use the government grant that Carthage got to uh, fund things that were cut due to COVID. Um, we asked them if the position was cut due to COVID, and they said, no, we were going to cut it anyway, which, of course, you know, great. So um, she's been able to stick around for the past couple of years on grant funding, uh, but the college is not budging on rehiring her. Uh, the city, it's a city museum. The museum doesn't want to hire her either which is really fun because it's a federal repository, which means that the fossils are the property of the federal government um, and therefore are required by law to be managed by someone qualified to do so. Um, so we're in a position where if she leaves, like not only does the program die because we don't have someone to run the field expedition, but the fossils could be seized from the museum. So the entire city loses its fossils. The college loses the fossils that students have dug up over the past 10 years. Um, and they still have to uh, cover that cost anyway. Um, so anyway, that's the gist there. Uh, no updates other than I've been sharing a letter kind of describing more details of the situation on my social media, um, and looking for anyone who is interested on the media side of things for, uh, to put out a larger story about it, get more eyes on it. Um, and hopefully identify a solution for moving forward financially. Yeah, it's shitty. Yep. Yep. Freshwater T Rex, freshwater hey, hippos. Anyway. Okay, yeah, sorry. sorry so anyway, I wasn't gonna just... interrupt you in that. Sorry. No, 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 that's fine. Yeah. Um and I'm you know it's it sucks. We've been putting up with it for, you know, four years now, but we'll hopefully find something to do about it. Oh yeah. my god. What do I need to do? Oh, yeah. AJ's Asleep, he says, prehistoric planet will have you believe there are no freshwater T-Rex. They're only salt water. <laughs> right. Right. We're so stupid. I am also, uh, I'm going to say a gameplay thing. Uh, I am getting increasingly concerned that I will no longer be able to play this game because so far, all of the new cards that you guys have put down, I have not been able to see. Hmm. Huh. Um, well, what you can maybe do... You could watch the stream. Is Well, you could, if you put all your cards on the table face down... Um, you can maybe leave the server and rejoin. I think I might do that. Do not leave the Zoom call. 
I'll, of course not. Yes. Um, Wanderer asked if you guys have reached out to Steven Spielberg. <laughs> uh, we don't have the right connections for that, but that would well, be phenomenal. That's and that's basically that's why our strategy uh, okay. has become get as much attention on this as we possibly can in the hopes that it reaches someone that could endow the position because then basically we don't have to be at the mercy of, of the college uh which is i saw someone earlier make a joke about cutting humanities programs and that's like why the, we've seen the death of media literacy um carthage has very much been taking that route much like other small private liberal arts colleges in that it's i you i wouldn't call it liberal arts anymore it's a business and nursing school you know like they all tend to become before going bankrupt um so, you know, if we can kind of cut the program loose of of whatever direction it's going, because honestly, like, I think the position belongs at that museum associated with the fossils anyway, um, especially because it is a federal repository. Um, yeah. 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 It's uh, fun. It's going to be it's going to be fun. Whatever happens. Uh, the, the funding runs out end of July this year. I'm I'm publishing Dilophosaurus, not to oh, cool. take us off that awful Yay. thing. Uh, and now I'm going to pass the turn rat and leave and come back. Okay. I'm going to send my fuel assistant to the lab. I'm going to dive into the, the trash bin and take a card. Rich Wisconsinians. Yeah. Amelia, you should reach out to the other seat loves. Right. The, <laughs> the side of the family that I'm not connected to <laughs> that has a lot of money. Um, for right. those of you from the Midwest, you probably are familiar with Quick Trip, the gas station chain. Um, I am theoretically related to the, the Zitlow family that runs that gas station chain. However, th due to fate, um, <laughs> we, we, don't, we're not, we don't talk to that side of the family. You, know, you can th thank my dad's dad for that. Um. That fixed it. <laughs> Good. Uh, to celebrate Scott coming back, I'm bumping him and I'm publishing something else. Oh, boy. <laughs> It, yeah, it is those Zelos. Uh, we're going to publish Ankylosaurus. Wow. With a copper light. Oh. Unless you tell me Ankylosaurus was a marine animal. No, but it didn't poop, so you're stretching the realms of the Oh, it didn't? But that's okay. It was a girl? <laughs> yes. Okay. Correction. Quick trip with a K, not the one with the Q. That's a different chain. Oh, oh my god! Outstanding, and we uh, we get our <laughs> last milestone. By the by, oh good. Ooh, I'm very sad, Amelia, that you aren't related to the people who own, who own Come and Go. Yeah, <laughs> mostly because God, <laughs> what, what a name. name! It's a great name. What a name! Dude. Wait, I'm sorry, Wildlife Wire. I just heard from my friends in Butte that circus elephants escaped, and were, or a surface elephant escaped, and was roaming around the city for a while today. Oh, I saw the video. I can send it to you guys on. That's awesome. Later. Say more. Uh, yes. I want to see that. Is, is it awesome? Well, uh, it, it's were there bad. fatalities? Did it, they it, shoot it, the elephant hundreds of times? Was it like Tyke? Or Tiny? I, I think the one we're thinking of, Scott, was Tyke. Oh, that was Tyke? Yeah. Yeah. I like how I, I know exactly which elephant you're one. thinking about. Yeah, well, well hey, from, the, from the cut elephant stunlock. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Our our cut elephants dying in horrible ways stunlock that we did. It. What video was that? I don't remember. It might I have been remember. Oviraptor. No, no, no. I think Amelia was there for it, and Amelia wasn't there for Oviraptor. Oh yeah. I, I want to say it was Notosaurus or something. It wasn't Notosaurus. It was over the summer. Oh yeah. I wildlife wire. I, I I had a full dyslexia moment there for a second with your comment. I read that as it got raptured safely. <laughs> yes, I also I actually read that. read that too. <laughs> we we the elephant has been safely raptured. He ascends to a new plane. There's a new a new way of of communicating euthanasia to the public. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> Horses are no longer being destroyed. They're being raptured. Oh, wait. Dalton, you can put yourself back. I'm changing my mind. I can't okay. do that. I, I don't know where I was. Was I in the museum? You were, you were... Hold on. You were there. Okay. Whatever yeah. that is. I can't right. meet the collections. Oh, yeah, Lord. Apache, the footage of, of Tyke's uh, incident was is one of the most disturbing and horrifying things I've ever seen. I, I, I have a sense of humor like an emergency room doctor in which... 
Uh, or rather, that's my defense mechanism. When something makes me sad, my brain is like, scab over quickly and make a joke about it. Um, which is great for everybody who knows me, I'm sure. Um, no comment. Phenomenal. Thanks. Dinodoms asked uh, if we think there's another group of marine reptiles from the Mesozoic or Cenozoic we haven't found fossils for, like the macroraptorial sperm whales. Um, I, I would, maybe, for me, I'm like, I wouldn't doubt that there's like groups of mosasaurs, ichthyosaurs, plesiosaurs that are like maybe specialized and we haven't found them and maybe never will. But the idea that there's like a hidden, like extra entire group from the Mesozoic or Cenozoic, that I'd be more surprised to find. Yeah, that sounds unlikely. Just because marine uh, facies are better sampled. I guess I can only do one thing, as we call it. Slurp. Glorp. I'm just... And My door. On, on the elephant raptured thing, I'm just picturing, because I've, I've seen on my For You page on TikTok a bunch Thank today, you. there's an artist who draws uh, cows ascending, which is <laughs> one of the, so she does these um, amazing, like, you guys know those, like, gorgeous, like, American landscape paintings where they have those, be it's amazing, like, surreal, like, sunlight and shadows and they look like the most beautiful thing ever she does like those except she'll draw a cow like this big right up in the sky just floating up and she always shows it finishing up the cow while playing that one bit from pink floyd's great gig in the sky <laughs> oh, hey, Amelia, you up. oh good wildlife wire has updated it sounds like she was corralled quickly with no law enforcement involved so that's I'm, I'm glad they didn't call the cops on the elephant. Here, hold on. I need to... Who is that? Did I... Think... Oh. Was... That makes can't me make, can't the, make um... jokes. Can't make jokes. No, you no. cannot. It makes me think of the scene in The Lost World where the um, when the T-Rex is rampaging through San Diego and the animal control truck goes by. Yeah. And you're like, all right, go get him, animal control. Yeah. For anybody who's thinking about watching the video of Tyke, don't watch the video of Tyke. It, it's very, very upsetting. Um, this is just my warning as the person who brought it up. It's, which I should not have done. It's very sad. Or rather, consider that your warning. You should watch The Skeleton Crew. Watch one of our videos that doesn't have a lot of views. Yeah. Watch, um, what's our worst video ever? One of the first ones, I, I think. I think it's like our second, um... I thought it was the Ankylosaur one. The um, Uplocephalus. No, well, it's not you Uplocephalus. We actually did that very... We got, we did quite well on that one. I think it's actually when we announced that we were doing the Futures Award fundraiser just because it wasn't a... Oh, yeah, that's... Honestly, that's fair. Yeah. Um, it Is What It Is has asked, if I could release an invasive population of Kurukula, would you? Yes. <laughs> Clearly. If I would destroy any ecosystem I had to. <laughs> I'll kidnap a thousand children before that, this company <laughs> dies. Um, <laughs> exactly. Uh... Kyo Kyo Disasters asked which is the worst paleo media documentary in Jurassic Fight Club or the Tarbosaurus, the, Mi the Tarbosaurus, the mightiest ever. I've never that's, heard of that, that second I, one. I watched that. I watched that. It That's not a documentary. It's terrible. Is that Okay. The, wait, what is, is that? Is that the Korean? Are you thinking of, I think you're thinking of oh, Speckles. Oh, no, I was thinking, thinking of Speckles. Speckles. Yeah. Well, the models are very similar. Oh. Oh. It might be the same production house. I don't think Maybe I it was like a companion. Yeah, I bet Kuru would handle the wild boar problem. What the, thirty to fifty <laughs> wild boars? Thirty to fifty wild Kurukulas. Um, yeah, Speckles is uh, not Speckles. Sorry, the the Tarbosaurus, the mightiest ever, is not a very good document. Okay, I'm gonna bump bump you, James. Oh, that's. Fine. Uh, I mean, well, okay. Oof. I think it's actually no. I think that this has to go to. I think this has to go by definition to to the mightiest ever because I think that it at least doesn't do active misinformation, <laughs> which I'm, which I'm, is Jurassic I'm, Fight Club does. Oh yeah, I am publishing Elasmosaurus. Never fear, I've put the head on the correct end. <laughs> And James, it's your turn. Are you coping and seething? Someone is. 
Yeah, that's true in other Wesley. We'd be achieving a different problem. That's good. <laughs> right. And Kuru, a... like, listen, all he needs to take out a Kuru, like even 30 to 50 of them, is like one solid baseball bat if your shoulders are pretty strong. <laughs> Depends how many times you can swing it. Paleontologist. At least I'm in Florida. We won't notice it twice. Yeah, it's that's true. <laughs> Yeah, I would just see no. like that YouTube channel Deer Meat for Dinner just start cooking them like this is how you skin a Kurukula. Gotta inflate it first. Is Kura James, that is girl? that is not That's not Florida, but it's what that guy kinda says. No, like no, me. no, no. I was gonna say, like, James, this is a level of weird hunting YouTube video that even I haven't gotten. You haven't found Deer Meat for Dinner? You found <laughs> I have the not slot found master. Deer Meat. Deer Meat for Dinner is pretty oh, 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 oh. <laughs> We are not talking about the Slockmaster on we, the channel. We might be talking about the Slockmaster on the channel now. No, Scott says, or I'm uh, sorry, Alex, Alex says, says go, to, go bed. to bed. You go to bed. <laughs> yeah, you go to bed. Um, is Kuru a girl's girl? Yeah, me. I think so. Oh, I'm so, the the question of was the same question was asked of Yorgi if Yorgi was a girl's girl. I don't think so. <laughs> I doubt. I don't. It, I don't know why, but that that animal does not give me good vibes. They, they were <laughs> they were parthenogenetic, but they were all male. <laughs> <laughs> Oh my god. Um what am I doing? That's what I'm doing. Okay, hold on. Uh yeah. I'm I'm also I'm gonna because I keep thinking about it, I'm gonna throw in our um Facebook chat one of the cow ascending pictures because I think you guys would love these. <laughs> That's fun. They're so good. <laughs> Who threw I have... all these cubes at me? I rolled them. <laughs> at me. Get they're on my cards. I have just call Alex the theater kid. Oh <laughs> Lamau. <laughs> oh, I really like the cow ascending. That's oh. great. It's so good. <laughs> Um, I, I have to say, one of my one of my deepest loves is people who have unbelievably amazing talent using that talent to shitpost. Yeah, yeah. like um, one one of my favorite YouTube videos is um, the guy who did Cursed Halo. If you've seen that mod, um, where it's just the most amazing things you could ever think of. It's just like adding Minecraft weapons into Halo. Um, all of the grenades do random effects that can be anything from just like making a very loud fart noise to spawning a bunch of trees that will make levels completely impassable and soft logging the game um, to just making more enemies. Uh, and it's amazing. It's so good. Um, but he has a video going through uh, his process on making the longest warthog possible in Halo. <laughs> and it is all of this incredibly like nuanced technical stuff on how to, on how to mod Halo. And it is in service of the dumbest joke. And I I love it with my whole heart. I am drawing so bad. I'm sorry. Uh, someone asked, and it's, it's it's gone too far, and I can't find it. I'm sorry, so I can't. I don't know. I don't remember who asked it. What kind of drink Helioscopos would be? Which is a, a very good question. Um, and I, it, Helioscopos would be either well, non-alcoholic would be Sunny D, and alcoholic would be a screwdriver. Yeah, that feels right to me. You know, I, I feel like I feel like it should be a different drink name. If it's a, a a screwdriver, but with Sunny D, a drill. <laughs> <laughs> I, th I think it's a ratchet. Oops. You know. Yeah. yeah. You know. You're yeah. you're correct. No ratchet. I'm is gonna have good. to try that. 
I'm going to have to try that. Next time I go to the grocery store, I'm going to get Sunny D and mix it with vodka and see what happens. And you spoilers, can just get it's going to be great. Sunny D. What? What? Oh. Have you not seen it? No. Oh, look it up. I like I don't... how, I'm sorry, AJ the Sleepy, you were doing battle with Alex in the chat here, and I think this is <laughs> very funny. My money is on AJ. Yeah, there's Sunny D Vodka Seltzer. I had no idea. I've never heard of this before. See, like, that that might be a Midwest thing. They're, like, I'm not seeing these out here. Like, the New England things, I definitely see the Old Bay Vodka, which I'm oh. so tempted to try. James, it's your turn. Um, I think... I, that would make a killer Bloody Mary. I think it would. And I think the other thing is just generally in the Midwest, liquor stores tend to be huge and there's just more things available at a given location. I'm getting I, uh, research. Having, oh, no, having I'm not going to do that. I'm actually going to withdraw my guys. We'll I, I oh, think Alex is pulling out the American ruling class. Yes, even, like, even, oh. more, um, even more so than Alex. I, I think I, I might I think be an authority on this more than, than himself. Is that I've lived with Alex for a long time now, and I spent a lot of time with theater kids. And Alex is not a theater kid, my <laughs> friends. Alex, uh, the 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 truly terrible energy of theater kids is not embodied in that man. I have a question. Can I publish mm -hmm. more than one um, trace fossil? Oh, uh, yeah, no, just one trace fossil per. Okay. I'm going to publish. You can either poop or leave footprints. You can't both. Okay. <laughs> Just watch me. <laughs> James. <laughs> <laughs> and when there was only one set of poops on the beach, that's when you were carrying me. <laughs> There's only one set of poop in the loves. <laughs> <laughs> Well, welcome to Cretaceous Crater. Hey, we got a question um, about Bucky's, which I can now oh. say I've been to, and I want to go back very much. Ugh, me too. There was, they've just opened up one in uh, Colorado, very close to where I live, and I, when I go back, I really want to go. Um, Draco Master asks, on the topic of dinos, sometimes, not really, and drinks, what drinks would the Hell Creek fauna be? Hmm. In in my in my experience, I, I associate all of them with uh, Rainier beer <laughs> because we we brought a bunch from University of Washington because I did my field work uh, in the Hell Creek through the through you wash. I have published Allosaurus. I don't know if I said that or not. No, no, the Little trash, the, the guy I pulled out of the trash. <laughs> um. Let's see. Um, I, what would they be? I have a terrible answer for for T Rex, but only oh, because it? it's what Car does when we're there. Oh no! I told you this, didn't I? Yeah. For some godforsaken reason, I don't even know if he actually even likes it or if he just does it. When we're out there, we don't we don't drink alcohol at the house, like at the cabin that we're staying in, but we, we do go to the bar when we go into town every couple of days and we go to the bar and he orders he, what he calls a red beer, which is a beer with so bad V8 juice oh. and hot sauce. Huh? I've never been brave enough to try one. I would try that. I think I have to this year. Just, I just gotta, I would absolutely but, try that. Yeah. Yeah, I, I. I'm sorry, Alex is getting massacred in our chat right now, and I'm really distracted. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Alex, please stop! You're not in any condition. <laughs> I know what you've been doing today. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um. I am uh, the Cretaceous Critter. Yes. So I, I have a, I have a gameplay question, real quick. Um. If we if we borrow more things from the fossil thing than we can hold, do we just let those stay there? Yeah, I think so. Just because of the exchange rate? Mm -hmm. I okay. think that's... Yep. Okay, I'm going to... We got a paleontologist here. Send a paleontologist in. Bumping Amelia. 
Actually, Dino Dom, I think it might be 65 against one. Bump. Pay a green. And I'll pay three. 68 White. against one. Two. Well, I guess 67 because Alex is one of them. To publish Terminotator. Yeah. I published Terminotator. <laughs> Termino <laughs> The Nagator. final. The last potato. The last potato. The last potato. I, I a, that every t- every time we play this, I'm just reminded of what a cool name that is. It's a very cool name. I am going with to bring my paleontologist in. Dalton, please remove him. Thank you. Please remove. Well, you're working for <laughs> me now because with six research points and a single blue cube, I've published Helioscopus. Oh my god! Hey! <laughs> no. Ta-da! There it is! Woo! I like AJ the Sleepy has likened us all to members of a family. In which I am apparently dad, Scott is mom, Amelia is the oldest daughter, and Alex and Dalton are mischievous twins. This is correct. <laughs> That's is I like correct? that. I don't I disagree with my position given that I feel I tend to direct more than an oldest daughter does. Well, I think that's the like the the oldest daughter becoming the surrogate mother of the I suppose of the family. I I th- I could see it that way. I'm actually more surprised that Scott's not dead. Yeah. I have not enough experience with fathers to to say <laughs> oh, yes, anyway. Dalton has <laughs> an expert in fathers. <laughs> I think it depends. Is are we going with dad the way like in the like fun you know kind of you know telling stories thing, or are we talking about like terrifying eighties authoritarian father, like father who was in Vietnam? Yeah, James, you're Italian. It's, it's well, right. It's, Italian father. It's Italian father. <laughs> well, yeah. See, okay, I I like that people are clarifying. There's like, uh, uh, Scott has father energy. Scott. Mother. Scott and is, mothering presence. Right. So Scott is both. We are all Scott's children and Scott's children alone. I'm your parents now. Go to bed. I'm your mom. <laughs> James I'm is your a dad. dad who tells you horrible stories from his childhood and attempt to connect with you. <laughs> oh my god, it's yeah. like my it, it's like my barber back in Ann Arbor. I was convinced he was gonna kill me one of these days. Well hold on. <laughs> hold on here. <laughs> Deadly bomb. Do I need to expound on that? That'd be interesting. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> okay. Yeah. So, so his name leave, was Ron. Let's just let that hang there. So his name was Ron. Um, he was a Vietnam vet. Every single time I went to get a haircut there, um, because I started I off gameplay interruption. So sorry. Oh yeah. Um, so. at the end when we're stuck with specimens, how uh-huh. are they counted against us? Is it the amount of victory points against us? Yes. Ooh. Let me double check that to be sure, but I'm pretty sure it's victory points. And if I drew specimen cards, uh, I can... No, I'm sorry. It is not the victory points. It is the research cube cost. The total? or Oh, the white cube. The white cube. White cube the cost white cube of any cost. specimen. Trace fossils don't count. Trace fossils don't count. And when I pull specimens... If I, if I drew specimen cards, I can only get rid of one? Um... Did you take the other... Just, no. So, yeah, you can only get rid of one. I took three, so I can only get rid of one. Okay. Correct. Okay. Scott Unnamed. the skeleton crew in his porous and perforated back. Okay, peep a peep That's an inside thought. That's <laughs> one of the... <laughs> it would have cost you Please zero... You. Zero dollars. <laughs> <laughs> to not say that. Fascinating projection. <laughs> yeah, I I am interested. I don't know if I would identify myself as fun uncle, but I'll take that. Funkle, if you will. <laughs> Funkle, yeah. Okay, so I'll so my my barber's name was Rob. Uh, sorry, Ron. Um, and he was a Vietnam vet. And uh, I first started going there when uh, I was still in ROTC. And that barber shop gave discounts for military and ROTC kids. So I would get a haircut for like 10 bucks. It was great. Um, and it was just two guys who ran the place, um, Bob and Ron. And, every, it, and it seemed like every time I went there, I always got Ron. And every, he was rad. He he cut haircut. Uh, well, he did haircuts 
back when he was in the Navy and stuff. Uh, or back when he was uh, back when he was in the Marines. Sorry. Um, and he was this bald dude that looked like Mike Ehrmantraut on Breaking Bad <laughs> and had like these big earrings and walked with a cane and stuff and always had these rad outfits. And um, every time I got my hair cut from him, he would tell me a new most horrifying story from Nam. Like, one time he was just like, hey, Scott, did I ever tell you how I got this limp? And he was like, no. And he was like, oh, yeah, it was back when I was with my platoon. We went into a rice paddy and it was 86 dudes went into the rice paddy and only five came out. And every single one of them was shot. I took four rounds from an AK up my back and one of them blew my knee out and just destroyed it. And then they flew me over to Japan to get it all fixed up and they wired it together in a bent position so I could sit down, but then it healed that way. And a couple of my midshipman buddies or corpsman buddies afterwards, uh, like were, I was complaining that I couldn't bend it anymore and they got me really drunk in Japan and then laid me down on a table and straightened it out. And I'm like, <laughs> he's giving me this haircut and I'm like, I, what I don't is be that? here anymore. <laughs> <laughs> oh, um, I published Bambi Raptor, by the way. Oh, I hope Ron's doing okay. I think he was in the hospital a while ago. Oh. I haven't heard much since. I fear he isn't. Hmm. But, man, every time I would come back with a new story, he was a character. Or is a character. Hopefully is a character. Hopefully. Hopefully I, remains a character. Y- yeah, I, I find it interesting that it has been stated by AJ the Sleepy that no one in the skeleton crew is gay enough or creepy enough to be the uncle. <laughs> That's an interesting uncle... Uh... Yeah. I'm More straight idea. uncles. I'm just going to put that out there. Um, if Satakasaurus Amitabha were a pasta dish, it would clearly be a gnocchi with pesto. Yeah. Yeah. Pes- pesto Kasaurus? I don't know. Is that anything? Am I anything? Moderating. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Uncle from RDR2 would be the strongest character ever if he didn't have lumbago. Lumbago. It's a, it's a slow lumbago. and painful death. I, uh, every time I see RDR2, I just think it's R2D2. I do too, yeah. Yeah. I'm an idiot. I don't even know if I've been taking my extra expedition perk. Oh, well. Too much going Oh, wait. On. I only drew three from the university. I should have drawn four. I mean, you're plus one. Yes. I'm not cheating. Um, we'll think about it. I know. It, se- it sounds does, sus. Does this one mean I get two white cubes? Uh, I think you're one? confusing moderating with actively antagonizing. Oh, yeah, yeah, which one? Sorry, I don't see. <laughs> oh, the Hell Creek one. Oh, um, yes, yeah, so you roll two green and you get two white cubes. Those before I forget. Ooh, that's an interesting one. I actually haven't heard that theory before that um, Uncle is old red from Red Dead Revolver. I don't know that much about Red Dead Revolver, honestly. Neither do I. No, I don't know much about it. I know they used they used the disc for Red Dead Revolver to test the quality of my PlayStation 2 when I sold it. Um, so they're like, if it can read this disc, it can read any disc. <laughs> That's it was very like, funny. It was like all scratched up, and I think it was one of the like weird blue ones, which I guess are harder to read. Um, mm. And then I think about a lot how I regret selling my PlayStation 2 and wish I still had that in all the games. And someday I'll probably buy buy all of that back. You almost bought one at the, at the con. I, did. I was tempted to buy one at Midwest Gaming Convention, but they were all a little too pricey, and it would be a little too difficult to transport it back. Oh, I got um, we got a super chat from Canadian yes. Bard. Thank you. Um, How to describe Gorgon Opsids actively and concisely in your writing? I practice. mean, <laughs> well, practice. Have you, tried, have you tried writing? One? Jeez, Jesus, well, Amelia, no. that's so funny. Good. <laughs> no. That was I see, what, e. I see what you're going for. That's how my brain took it immediately, though. Was just, have you tried getting good? But no, that's not what I meant at all. God, <laughs> sorry. No, it's just no. It is 
it is something that takes a lot of like it's it's a lot more difficult than people give it credit for. It's something that I'm glad that I ta I was taught in undergrad, like specifically how to write, like you said, accurately and concisely. Because it's something that's like extremely important both for writing research papers, especially for writing grants where you often have a word limit. Um, you just have to, I, I like that's why I said I said practice because it's like it's hard to really describe what exactly you need to do other than just kind of get in the hang of it like for me i remember a piece of advice that one of my advisors gave me being um like just try to like think about it as cutting characters like where can you use a possibly use a shorter word or how can you phrase things so that you're using three words instead of six like it's 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 really hard it takes a lot of active work but eventually it kind of just becomes second nature nature um Avoid yeah. anything that doesn't help. Yes, like you probably don't need those words. Um, um, in terms of like describing them for, uh, like, if they, I guess it depends on what kind of writing this is. Like, if this is like fiction, and you're trying to like describe uh, a Rogan opposite, um, like one thing, one one tack you could take is like to avoid kind of coming off as like using kind of the same descriptors that people often use to describe prehistoric things, or if it's like never been done before, think about how in, in a particular moment, if it was like a tiger or a crocodile or like some modern animal, but you didn't, but you had never seen one of those before and didn't know what it was. But I think about how you would describe that to serve the purpose of whatever it is that you're writing and kind of use that oeuvre to, to guide how you would do the prehistoric animal. Cause right. Like it ultimately it should come across as, like if this is fiction writing, like it should come across as whatever this animal needs to do to to serve the scene, and so it, it doesn't. Like there's there's a reason you want to include a specific like gorgonopsid or animal or whatever um, in that scene, but if you if you plug and play with a different one, you can get some sense as to what do I need to convey to get this across without seeming like oh and like and this is a gorgonopsid which might like ruin the tension of a scene or something. Yeah. Um, by the way, I'm going to go to the publishing house. My goodness. And I'm going to pre Blackwater go... Arthur. Pre Blackwater Arthur was worse than post Blackwater Arthur. Uh, I'm three Cretaceous theropod holotypes, and I will cite the other people who've contributed, which oh, are totally one to Dalton and one to Scott. Right. Thank you. Uh, I do I have would... one. And I do indeed. Well, I mean, I have. Two on my own. So I think I, you can pick I'll, who you would want to. I'll give it to Scott because, or to Dalton because he doesn't have any, and Scott has a lot. Yeah, they're calling me a war criminal in chat. They, what they did are I do? calling you a war criminal. <laughs> in chat. I would also like to just. I think we can just make the. I. Why am I hair Strauss? This feels odd. It's great not knowing who any of these people are. It is Amelia is clearly Sadie Adler. Scott is clearly Charles. Well, either Dalton. I'll or take Scott that. Is Charles. I'll take it, that. Well, oh, if, oh yeah. The, no, honestly, I think Dalton's Charles. Yeah, fair. I, I did like being Lenny. I think you're Lenny. I think Alex is uh, is John, and I think Micah. I will take no. Arthur for myself, <laughs> unless I can't. In which case, I'll take. Uh, Scott, you may also be Hosea. Oh, James, are yeah. you done with your turn? Oh, yes, sorry. <laughs> I would say, um, yeah. Hey, yeah. hey, finally, a super chat. Hey! Um, yes, Alex is right. We are all the crazy paleontologists lately. <laughs> um, what filler animals would you like to see depicted in games like Prehistoric Kingdom and JWE? Um, Briefly. I yes. For these global objectives, mm -hmm. do I get to take the four Jurassic holotypes because I have four Jurassic holotypes? Yes, you can just publish yep. that without paying anything. You can do that for free. Okay, okay. and I gotta put one of one. You of put your far left one. Mm -hmm. I always forget to look at those. Um, okay, continue. Hello, yes. Stinky. 
Uh, filler yeah. animals for PK and JWE. Um, it's tricky. Thescalosaurus. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I, I was going to say a range of small ornithopods. Range of small right. ornithopods. Uh, Trobodontids. Um, more small oviraptors. But um, I'm, I'm trying to think of some other ones. Um, maybe like Protoceratops or like Cetacosaurus, like little margin of stallions. Yeah. Yeah. Yinlong, little guys yeah. like that. Um, um, I see a question about Troodon coming back. And because none of yeah, us are involved that was research new. on this, I want to just clarify. There is a, a, you know, there is research ongoing Mm -hmm. about the status of Troodon based on material collected in Montana. And so what the Museum of the Rockies just unveiled is a skeletal mount of an animal that they're studying that they're calling Troodon. We have to wait for the paper to come out to find out what kind of taxonomic action is being taken and what the evidence is. Um, and so I think it's not that it's not back. It, I wouldn't say it's back yet, but it might come back. Yeah. Yeah. We are not yet at the... We're so back, but we are not still not so at back. the it's so over. Yeah. Right. Luigi, um, I don't know. I don't we are know. we are specifically at the I'm publishing Pentaceratops. Ooh. Nice. And that resets oh, the uh, collection. Um Luigi, I don't know how long you've been here. But that's such a good comment. Thessalosaurus is the equivalent of the furtive pygmy. So easily <laughs> forgotten. Yeah. You know, it, I didn't even realize Thesky remains were as common as they are because it's so often forgotten. Like, I thought it's it was an extremely in the name. Rare animal. Right? No, it's so funny. Neglectus. Yeah. Um, Pelican honestly, Minus would be a great one, Galaxies 08. Honestly, I, I want to see. A, I think this would be a better fit for Prehistoric Kingdom than for JWE. And. Uh, I would love to see some more small non-dino critters, like uh, I want a Champsosaur and stuff. Yeah. Uh, I don't think I've seen a Phytosaur appear in a game. I know they were big. Phytosaur would be so cool. Mm -hmm. It'd be um, Phytosaurs are so... Honestly, so uh, okay, all right. We're going even more uh, small and even more filler. Uh, if slash when they add marine shit to um, prehistoric kingdom, ammonites, like yeah. tons of ammonites. Carnivore's legacy has fight us. Oh, is that a mod? I bet. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Uh, dinosaurs more asks what your main horses are in Red Dead 2. I've, I've, I've played online. I've never played the main game, and I don't remember what horse I had online. Oh, you've played online, but you haven't played the... Oh. oh. The online was free. This, oh, yeah. Yeah, this still... This hurts me. I'm it's such a good that's game. That's fair. I'm I know it's an amazing game. Right? Here. Like Thessalus... Oh my god, it's being neglected again. Uh, and it's immediately yes. covered up by another one. Yeah. <laughs> by Deinonychus food. Amelia, it's your turn. Thank you. Honestly, uh, that that's a fun idea uh, from Goth Parrot. Ammonites with procedurally generated shell shapes. That'd be great. Um, yeah. Although I I will say before we get to the super chat question, I would love in prehistoric kingdom, and I would honestly not put this past them if they had um, some sort of like. I guarantee they're going to add Megaloceros at some point, and. I've never seen a z like zoo builder game that actually does like deer losing and gr regrowing their antlers mm. with the season. Would love for them to do that and have slightly procedurally generated antlers. But that'd be cool. Critch case is critter. Out of curiosity, how old were each of you when you wrote slash public uh, published your first scientific paper? Um, I would be infinity years old because I have yet to do it. Because that fair. is not a part of my job. <laughs> um, I was twenty-eight when I published my first first author publication. My first publication with my name on it was when I was twenty-five or twenty-six. I think I was twenty-one. Um, 
and then it was a little while before I had any more because it was a it was a project I did I I think I've talked about this on stream before I did a study abroad project in college while I, uh, with Steve Brissati at the University of Edinburgh and he very kindly uh, just basically said here's the project like here's what I want you to do with it it'll, it'll be your paper you can write it you'll be lead author um, it was very kind of him um, and that was a while before I started grad school or anything um, so my next paper was well actually I guess I had a few when I was 23 but anyway yeah 21 I, Alex has said in chat 22 I was also 22 that was my undergrad thesis I published the the summer in it came out in the, my first uh, semester of grad school like the fall after I finished up undergrad it's terrifying ones that was sight. AJ the sleepy, what do you mean by that? Oh, that's really funny. <laughs> that's oh, really no. funny. <laughs> that's really funny. <laughs> I don't think we can repeat that. Crisis. Oh, we can well, repeat never mind. that. <laughs> I, I, was it with you guys who I was talking to when I the phrase twink death had just come about? And I was like, I'm trying to just <laughs> wait. Now I want to experience twink birth. <laughs> <laughs> Disgusting. <laughs> uh. We're getting a lot of questions. We're getting a question about pterosaur white meat, dark meat distribution. Oh, I bet I'm, I'm going to spitball and then James will tell me I'm wrong. Uh, yeah, of course. I bet that pterosaurs would have the differentiation between light meat and dark meat like ter like birds do. That's it, yeah, James. Probably. Tell me I'm wrong. No, that's probably okay. Right. Yeah, I would. I would guess that their flight muscles were very white meat. Yeah, mm -hmm. probably. Yeah. How <laughs> oh, good, James? Your twink <laughs> birth comment give me some damage. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it, it's coming along very slowly. Uh, being a postdoc is it's a, uh, it's involves a, a lot. Of, it's a slow birth process. Yeah, it's a breach. <laughs> oh God. Yeah, it's. Uh, it takes a while. Um, but try it. Anyway, Amelia, the rat. Oop, sorry. You flung it across. I had to. <laughs> Whoa, rat be upon you. I mean, yeah. I mean, Where yeah, Alex, rat? like, air sacs are like tissue paper. Like, I bet that there would be taste. Birds have air sacs, too. Oh, there. But, but what do bird air sacs taste like, though? Nothing. Yeah. We don't eat the air sacs. <laughs> I'm going to publish a thing. God, I, spill I just beans. spill your beans. <laughs> I'm fucking Ooh. both of us. Barosaurus. Um, yeah. Four and Ooh. Doesn't look like a bear. <laughs> <laughs> Does look like a saurus. Um, folks. Is that it? We are no, down to we the are wire. One away. The next holotype published will end the game. Okay. Um, I saw a question here I wanted to answer, but I don't remember where it is. Oh, it's how different does a group need to be to be identified differently? This is from Marcus Perez. Um, asking question. after hearing that birds are reptiles in an earlier episode. So mm. very briefly, and we always say we're going to make a video on this. We should actually, now that MGC is over, make some videos on things like this. Um, but... You can think of phylogenetic classification as just a series of nested hierarchies. So things are members of increasingly inclusive groups, starting from the smallest group that they're a part of is just their species, to the largest group being, in this case, all of animals or all of life. Um, birds are reptiles because the group of birds are, are all descendants of dinosaurs, and they form one monophyletic group within dinosaurs. So that's one nested group, which are a kind of dinosaur, which is a larger nested group. And dinosaurs are a kind of archosaur, which is another nested group. And archosaurs are a kind of reptile, which is another nested group. Um, mm -hmm. If you're asking more about the colloquial classification, I think that's just entirely a usage thing and kind of the vibe and role that things occupy in society. Um, but that's not scientifically regulated. So that's really yeah. kind of just as it's used. I hope that makes sense. There is, but, um, oh, go ahead, Amelia. I was just going to say, like, that's why, like, to the second point, that's why sometimes we'll make a joke about genera and, like, higher levels of taxonomy not being real. 
it's not that it's literally not real. It's just that there's not a set definition of when or when so- when or when not something should be the same genus or not. Like the only unit of classification that is theoretically representative of like a biological entity is the species and everything above that is just kind of like for the sake of organization um but with the with like exactly what james said about like birds being reptiles it's like you can't animals and other living things like you can't leave your group like you can't an animal cannot all of a sudden not be an animal anymore just like a bird even though it's really weird can't all of a sudden not be a reptile anymore because that's the lineage that it came Mm -hmm. from yeah another key thing to to like uh, consider with this that isn't often like t- taught or like communicated, especially like publicly, right? Is that um, people are off always asked, like people are very interested in like, oh, what like what differentiates one group from another? How do we tell them apart? Like, what makes something like what makes a reptile a reptile? What makes a, a, a mammal a mammal? And it's you have to to separate your conception of the group and the diagnosis. So right. We, we can, the way that we now consider life and the way that we now think about how to organize life is by descent, right? So, like, the reason that birds are reptiles is because they are descendant from other reptiles. Um, that is what makes them a reptile. It's the same reason that, like, I am a mire because I am descendant from other mires, right? We, we categorize things based off of lines of descent. Um, we have features... We use certain features to diagnose that, to help us say like, hey, because this has X, Y, and Z features, we think it probably is descendant from something like this. And we use that to place it in a group, but the the existence of the group itself is not predicated on having any particular features. It's predicated on being descendant from a member of that group. If a bird gave birth, if if a bird egg hatched and the animal that came out had no feathers and walked around on four legs, it would still be a bird. It would just be a very strange bird. And it'd be very hard to tell that it's a bird, but we would still consider it a bird. If a crocodile hatched out of an egg and it had feathers, it would still be a crocodile because it's descendant from crocodiles. We, um, it would be, again, it would be hard to tell because it lacks diagnostic features of those groups, but having those features are not what make you a member of the group. Having those features make us think you're descendant from the group, and so you're a part of it. And right. on that, I want to address the the question asking if we are all invertebrates. Depends on which group of invertebrates you're talking about. Because invertebrate, um, sorry if there's weird sounds, the cat is rubbing on the microphone. Um, invertebrate is another group that's paraphyletic, kind of. Because you've got the invertebrate animals that are animals, but they haven't quite reached um, the split yet between invertebrates that include things like insects, crustaceans, um, uh, worms and stuff, or um, uh, invertebrates. So way, way the hell back. You gotta go way the hell back in time. You know, that's where... Sorry, I'm. it's late. Uh, those are separate from things like sponges and jellyfish. Um, so if you consider that we come from invertebrate animals, as in like tunicates and like other weird jelly animals, yes. However, we do not come from the same kind of invertebrate as insects and crustaceans and stuff. Um, because that's a split between, um, two kinds of, uh, embryo development, which is pretty cool. It's basically animals are tubes and they're and that split is which hole forms first if it's the mouth or not the mouth that forms first right the the Um, the 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 southern mouth if you will right right and that's also why like i think in part it's why internally like insects and other um their protostomes is that is the name of that group because their mouth the mouth is the first hole of the tube to form uh, developmentally um, they're also inverted, like their nerve, our central nervous system is kind of located on our backs in insects and other invertebrates on that branch there on the front. Um, yeah, no, super cool. So like we are more, so we are more closely related to starfish and sea urchins than we are to insects because I, they're developmentally um, on that same branch. Yeah. I have three I things to say. Nice. Number one is wildlife wire i had no idea that kudu were actually cows and not antelope that's that awful rad. that's insane 
Uh, number two, to piggyback off of a question that was directed at Alex, who didn't know his drag name, my drag name is Sarah Tops. Uh, and <laughs> number three is, in that vein, I'm playing Triceratops oh. and ending the game. Okay. Hot dog. I have I had more to say on that stun lock, but we should also go to sleep. I know, we had, <laughs> we had so much to say on that stun lock. Chats. Sorry. Um, we've got a couple more super chats. As also, well. you're welcome, guys. <laughs> yeah. Um, and I will leave it up to everyone to t to calculate their victory points. Um, if there are questions, I can answer them. Um, as we're doing math, um, we are not trying to ignore the the chat, but this requires a degree of concentration. Also, I kept rolling the absolute worst. My goal was Triassic, and I got no Triassic oh. shit the whole time. Okay, I've got a... And a reminder that it's only the furthest uh, circle you've uncovered that counts for points up. Um, I, I have my total. I have mine as well, so I can also talk I about it. I do else. not, because okay. I... I haven't to... started. I was waiting for that people to be done so I could... Um, Draco Master, we just want to say thank you. Thanks for the super chat. Thank I'm glad you enjoy those kinds of deep dives and stun locks. Yes, uh, Dr. Dino asks, uh, says they're trying to get back into YouTube content. Know of any dinos that people might enjoy seeing a deep dive on? They've got one on Satakosaurus already. Um, maybe Dinochirus. I think people always like that. Oh, yeah. It's really cool. Yeah, uh, yeah, um, Dinochirus would be a great one. And then Trail Mixup asked, and thank you again for the super chat. I'm trying to like all the super chats as they come in, by the way. I apologize. I know I've missed some. Um, Trail Mixup has asked, what dinosaur would you choose to ride in a medieval cavalry charge? Um, Triceratops, 1,000%. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. I want, I will be holding my own lance, and it will be adding three. Quad ceratops. Quad ceratops. Well, yeah. Yes, exactly. I thought you said quad triceratops, and I was like... No. <laughs> that would be a lot. Yeah, tri um, no, triceratops is exactly what I would have said, yes. too. And are we awaiting more math, Amelia? Or yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. So one thing I just want to add is what Amelia was saying about invertebrates gets at another point about phylogeny, which is that um, a lot of groups, as we can traditionally conceive of them, are what we call paraphyletic groups that are not defined or diagnosed by the presence of a unique trait, but by the absence of a unique trait, which is not something that you can use for grouping. Like what you're what phylogenetic analyses look for are new evolutionary novelties, which can be the gain or loss of something. Invertebrates is paraphyletic because it just means things that did not acquire the novelty that is a backbone. And so that is not necessarily useful for grouping information, which is why some things that we call invertebrate are closer related to us than other things uh, which form their own group, like Amelia said. It's a very, very deep split. Um, mm -hmm. But we should do videos about phylogenetics and classification. I think it's, uh, I think we are probably the best people on YouTube to do it. So we should do it. Okay, so I want to make sure for the game that I counted everything right. I count up all the points down here. All of your, yeah, my, all your, all your victory points. My victory points. I succeeded in five Jurassics, so I get my 17 right Oof, that's gonna be good yes that is good and then i have one circle so that's five and then yes. i have subtract subtract the white numbers from the cards that are correct. left. correct mm -hmm. you okay. subtract and the my... white numbers i thought it was the victory numbers. points i did too but we checked that earlier this is the white ones oh well that might have changed the outcome of some prior games but um, never mind. it yeah. probably would have yeah and then I just will state that my secondary objective was not helpful at all because it was Genosaurs, of which there are none in the Jurassic, and that oh. was my my other one. I'm sorry. So, um, okay, so I'm I'm good. So what's your total, Amelia? Ninety one. Very ah, nice. Ah, damn. I had seventy six. Eighty five. Ninety seven. Very no! nice. Total. Yeah, my, those uh, global objectives really help. The global objective in mine was a Cretaceous uh, succession. And so I, I guessed Cretaceous for my thing, and it helped out tremendously. Yeah. I, uh, I you know, my victory thing was just meat eaters, which oh. I think it's good. I think it's easy, and I think for that reason it does not pay off that well. 
Yeah. Because you kind of have to do a lot of them before you get anything. Mm -hmm. um, but good game. Very good game. Yes, good game, everybody. Indeed. I hope uh, you d didn't hate the, the house rules. I actually no, really no. liked it. I, I like them a lot. I can definitely see some fun they need some synergy. Like, uh, yeah, like if you, if you, because you you said is Museum of the Cretaceous. If you mm -hmm. just so happened to get like Cretaceous, oh, yeah, like, yeah. Mm -hmm. like uh, and one of those, it would be just a win more. It, it you'd be unstoppable. It is chance, and I, I do appreciate that you have it. It's before you look at the objectives. Mm -hmm. But there is still a chance that it would be, like, literally entirely unfair. Yeah. I think that Museum of the may also need to not be... So I think most of the things in the deck are Cretaceous. Yes. That's, that's true. So it may also be too strong. Like, maybe you could yeah. do it as Jurassic or Triassic, but you, like... You but know you what I mean? Maybe, yeah. Yeah. Or, I mean, I could see it being, like, a museum of the Triassic, because the Triassic stuff is so rare that it, like, really boosts your ability to get that. Yeah, but the issue is that because the Triassic stuff's so rare, most of the Triassic stuff doesn't cost that much to begin with. That's a fair point. Well, it doesn't cost much fossil. It costs a lot of That's research. a lot of research, yeah. So it could maybe reduce the research cost of Triassic stuff. That instead. would actually be a cool way to do it, that it's, like, it's easier yeah. to get it published. Yeah. yeah, I mean, we could workshop it, but I yeah. I enjoyed doing this. Did you get? Did all of y'all in chat enjoy the ah. house rules? Oh. What? I w I was gonna say I, I I thought you were asking us if we like oh. I I, I don't really care if enjoyed. I'm oh, sorry. Okay, there. I'm no, no, no. I'm kidding. Please. <laughs> yes, sir. <laughs> we also wish we could publish real work this quickly. Yeah, you yes. have oh, no yeah. idea. Um, sometimes the streams are announced ahead of time, but sometimes they're surprise. Like this one, I think was just a couple of the socials and and on YouTube. Usually, we make a post about it when we can. Yeah, yeah. Um, this we try to give you guys a couple days heads up, but sometimes our schedules uh, interfere yeah. with that. We yeah. we want to get in the habit of streaming more frequently. Because previously, our streams have basically been either we're fundraising for something or one of us published a new critter and we wanted to talk about it. So we, like, streaming's fun. We love interacting mm -hmm. with you guys. Um, and we want to do it more often and not have it just be, it needs to be one of these very special, like, well, they're always special occasions, one of these specific occasions. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, it, it's a it's a thing we want to definitely do more of the time. And I think we had wanted to try to do it, like, you know, as frequently as possible this year. And then, you know, mm -hmm. with getting ready for MGC and everything, our schedules were really tight. Yeah. Um, and, you know, it does, it, it does take time out of the day and all of that. But I'm really happy we were able to make time for it today. I had a blast doing Me too. This. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, you know what I want is a better graphics card so that I can stream Helldivers too. <laughs> ba, 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 ba. Ba, ba, yeah. Um some uh Cretaceous Critter asked if we were planning to make a video on the new prehistoric dev diary. Um I don't think anymore. Maybe the next one. Yeah, maybe I think it's I think we've missed the boat a little too much on that one. Um and Cretaceous yeah, Critter, please send us your uh first paper you're a co first author on. That's, that's so cool. yeah, that's that's great. Please do. Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah, no, that's that's great. Yeah, yeah, the prehistoric kingdom death diary. We probably missed the boat on this one. That that was when we were getting like really, really ready to go to MGC, and we yeah. had no time. Right. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, and uh, and yeah, I mean, I've been traveling constantly for work too, and I usually do the stream hosting because I have gigabit internet. Um, and so when I'm traveling, we just can't really do it. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I think in the future we'll be able to do more. And I mean, one thing we've teased a number of times that I think we are starting to try to get into, hopefully, is making some other kinds of prehistoric kingdom videos that aren't just dev diaries. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But we'll see when that happens. But watch this space. It's going to be fun. And I think we've got a, a cool format that I think everybody's really going to like. Yeah. 
Yeah, I'm very excited. It's not going to be a clone of the Jurassic World Evolution Two series. It'll be different. It's going to be something very different. Yes. Mm-hmm. But with all the skeleton crew goodness that you are, oh, oh, it'll be grown so accustomed to. Yeah, yeah. Chaos will reign. And a brief reminder to any of you still here, um, and going forward when we stream, we're going to always leave super chatting on and everything, but we also do have a QR code here to our other tip jar. Um, we just have that there because YouTube takes a pretty big cut out of super chats. So if you if you have, you know, kind of options in the way you want to give stuff, um, you could also think about putting it there. But uh, that's, that's that'll just be there chilling in the corner uh, probably every time we stream from now on. So uh, that'll just be there. And I guess yep. with that, we should probably wrap up. Oh, it'll be six hours where we're going to talk about anything related to the game? Maybe. Yeah. <laughs> yes, that's a good idea, Isaac. When we end the JWE2 series, we'll rank our videos about JWE2. <laughs> paleontologist that's, that's a really rank. Good idea. Paleontologist rank. <laughs> that's a great idea. I'm going to put that one in the mind box, um, which other people call their memory. Memory? <laughs> Put it in the mind box. Uh, yes. <laughs> I think uh, that means we should end the stream. Yeah, probably. Yeah. Yeah. All right, all of you. <laughs> have a good night. Thank you for night, joining everybody. us today. And we'll have the VOD of this up as well, so you can always relive it if there's anything fun here you want to see again. All right. Bye, y'all. Bye. Bye. Stream finished.